All right, we should be live. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for being here on this Sunday. Hello to everybody in the chat room. And uh, hello to everybody watching this later on in the future. Hello, future people. I hope the world is better uh, in the future than it is today. But uh, today we'll be talking with uh, my friend, uh, John Cardi. Uh, John Cardi is a young guy like me. He uh, enjoys playing video games. He likes sports. He works in construction and, you know, by by most measures, he has a, a normal life, you would say. He's a good guy. Um, but he does have a history of having um, experiences, uh, a lot of them which make him uncomfortable, I think. Um, we'll ask him ourselves. But, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to basically talk about uh, everything going on uh, in the history of your life since you were a child and what's happening currently and, and what would you like to happen in the future. But, uh, yeah, thank you for being here, John. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Looking forward to it. Great, great, great. All right, so let's see. Um, I guess the first question I'll ask you is, uh, uh, how are you How are you doing right now? I know you took a break for a few months, which is totally under, understandable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what was your mentality mm -hmm. uh, before you took the break? You know, and, and how do you feel now coming out of the break? Can you Can you share that with uh, us? Well, I would say things started getting a little intense. You know, the activity started. Well, I mean, it kept kind of like slowly ramping up as the years went on and it got to a point where uh it went a little further than i would have liked okay and uh <clears throat> that's why i need a break you know when when things start happening that you don't even believe in or believe that are possible you know i needed to take a step back and you know just you know take it easy for a little bit it gets stressful after a while no yeah totally and it, it does seem like a lot of times when you give something attention it gives it back to you. Um, oh, definitely. Especially with this kind of stuff, for sure. Like, if they know you're interacting, like, it, it will pick up naturally. It's just how it works. Cool. All right. And then I also, I was going to say, I know the, around the time you took a break, it was December, which I know for me, I was getting overwhelmed. Just I always get overwhelmed in December because it's Christmas time. A lot of things are closed. A lot of things are busy. Mm -hmm. You're visiting family. Yeah, the world is just upside down. Did that have anything to do with it? The time of year? Oh, I'm sure it had. Stuff? I'm sure it has something to do with it. You know, everybody's. It's been a crazy few years for everybody. You know, that's true. So, <laughs> so that you know that made it a little worse, but. Great. Okay. Well, uh, we'll take a little break here. Every now and then, we'll take a break and address the room. So uh, first, I just want to say hi to everybody who's here. I know Anon is here. Uh, Mr. Crowley is here. Bobby Dizzle's here. Bobby Dizzle's got a podcast you guys should check out. Nice. My good friend uh, Iowa Walks is here. Uh, we got Brandy Phillips is here. And uh, I know uh, Betty Double Kick Chick is here too. I saw her. Mm -hmm. Are you from? Do, are any of these your friends as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, many yeah. of them are. Yeah, they've okay, been following great. me for uh, probably since the beginning, I would say. So they have like the best view of what's going on. They, they're okay. the ones that know everything pretty much that we're going to talk about. All right. Let's see. Let's look at some comments then. Some some of the ones I haven't seen already. Okay. Uh, here we go. Iowa says, your heart is an exit. I heard it can power portals to Andromeda. So uh, Iowa is a uh, poet and a musician. So you could check out his channel. And once again, this is a very uh, poetic line. Uh mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, I think uh, I think the heart refers to the spirit realm, perhaps our mind as well. I don't think it's a literal heart, although correct us, Iowa walks. But I do like that statement. Thank you for being here, Iowa walks. Uh, Brandy Phillips says hello. Mm -hmm. Hello, hey, Brandy. Uh, we got four green hearts. Very good. <laughs> it's a lot of hearts. Probably <laughs> it's a lot, and it's a good color. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Crowley says I'm listening to everything just tabbed out. Okay. Good for you. Thank you for being here, Mr. Crowley. Mr. Crowley has also been following us for a while, ever since the Black Lotus days. Mm. Uh, I walk says Crowley was... Okay, Crowley was, is outside laser tag. I run a laser tag business. <laughs> oh, okay, Mr. Crowley uh, just took his son uh, to do some laser tag, and his son is getting good. And I walk uh, is also... I used to work at a laser tag arena, too. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. I did it twice. I liked it. Awesome. Uh, Betty, Betty double kick chick says definitely still mates. Uh, great. That's good. We need all the friendship we can get. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, and then and then Betty Double Kick Check says uh, good day to Brandy. Well, thank you once again, everybody, for being here. Uh, feel free to ask any questions, and uh, we will take <clears throat> breaks to answer them. For sure, we want to get some new insights, and we want to uh, involve everybody. Uh, the more people at the party, the more fun it is. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. How long ago was it when <clears throat> you decided to become public with <clears throat> the strange experiences you had? I believe it was the end of the summer of 2020, All right. around that time. Maybe beginning of, I think, yeah, end of summer 2020. Got it. Yep. When yep. Uh, everybody had to stay inside and, you know. Uh -huh. My mind started racing a little bit, and I got yeah. I got to the conclusion that I should uh, do something instead of just sitting on my ass, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say. What an interesting time to be alive, uh, summer 2020. Boy, what a time. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, a lot of things changed, and it definitely seemed like it motivated you. I'm sorry, go, go ahead. Yeah, that time of year was a roller coaster for everybody, but I was, like, dealing with this stuff on top of it. It was just a crazy year for me. It was, like... I was on my toes 24 seven, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was so fun. Just, it, was, it was fun. So, so you said one of the things that motivated you was the, you know, the fact that you, we were isolated, our, our life was changed. You, you said you were just feeling like, um, you know, you had to do something with your time. Um, motivating you, for instance, let's say, let's say that we didn't have a pandemic. We didn't have a, uh, quarantine time. The world didn't shut down. Uh, do you think you still would have come out? You know, what else was motivating you? I think I would have still. I, this is something I always wanted to do. And I would like start the process of doing it and then back out because, you know, I was scared. I didn't want to I didn't want to do it. So this has been something I've been wanting to do for maybe 10 years. I just mm -hmm. finally got the the guts to do it, you know. And then the okay. channel I went on, um, we, I agreed to do it. And then I tried to back out the last second. I was like, I don't want to do this. And then he actually made a video saying, like, I need you to come on. And I did it. You know, it, I have a hard time watching that interview. I was a mess back then. You can see, sure. like, visually, I was stressed out. I didn't even know I looked like that. It's, I can't even watch that video. <laughs> Damn. Damn. So, yeah, that's yeah. intense. That's intense. Yeah, definitely. I want to say that, um, well, you know, it's very obvious that uh, these experiences have caused you suffering and mental problems and physical problems. And uh, I don't like to see anybody who suffers with any of those problems. So, like I say, uh, you know, anybody listening to this, you shouldn't have chronic pain. You shouldn't have chronic sleeping problems. You shouldn't have chronic mental problems. You should enjoy your life. And so I, I encourage people to, to try to get a, a solution to that. And I understand it's hard to get solutions to these problems. Um, if it's just a medical problem, you know, there are a lot of nonprofit hospitals that can help you. Uh, mm -hmm. but if it's, if it's a, if it's a paranormal problem, there's less resources, you know, yeah. uh, there's that, there's a wise saying, the saying says, who are you going to call? You know, mm -hmm. really, who are you going to call when you have a paranormal yeah. problem? And, and real quick on that, there's been a few people, uh, a few groups I've contacted and showed them my evidence and they like would literally, I'll never hear from them again. <laughs> so even right. the people you're supposed to go to still had a hard time grasping the stuff that you I got, had. It was very frustrating. You got ghosted by the ghost investigators. Right? Yeah, like MUFON did it to me twice. And the second time, you know, they promised, like, I promise you I will not leave you like we did last time. And sure enough, I sent them the pictures. His colleagues said they thought they were fake. So I sent them the videos and I never heard from them again. And that was right. maybe a year and a half ago. So, you know. Yeah, well, I wanted, yeah, I wanted to talk about that later on. That was in my notes. So basically, what mm -hmm. I was going to say is that I feel like what a lot of people do. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about my group of people, which are scientists, research scientists. I feel like what a lot of them do, which I don't agree with, is they hear a fantastic story, or they hear something that has to do with the paranormal, and their automatic uh, response is to dismiss it completely. Um, I don't think that's right. I think uh, I think you should investigate something, even if it's really weird sounding. Um, you definitely don't leave someone high and dry. And um, I understand why they do it. They're not good reasons. I mean, for a scientist, if you show any support for anything paranormal, you automatically get pushback. Everybody like you know gangs up on you. But if you show, if you automatically show like I don't believe in that, if you push back against those claims, 
you automatically get praise from the other scientists. So that's the incentive. It's like, that's not right. It's basically like peer pressure and bullying. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, look, I understand if it's, uh, to me, it's okay if you're a scientist, you say, listen, um, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, right now, at this point in my life, I don't have the time to dedicate to it. And um, I, I wish you the best and let me know if I can help you, but I, I'm not going to look into it further. But that's very different than someone, than a scientist saying, well, basically just ghosting you, not giving you any feedback, or a scientist saying, this is all mm -hmm. BS, you know, just dismissing you completely. That that's that's goes against everything in science, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Yeah, there's it's frustrating. A lot of, there's a lot of things in science that um that happen and we don't really understand why they happen. Um, but that doesn't mean we should just dismiss mm -hmm. it. My my friend who's a, a veterinarian gave me an example. So there's basically if anybody here has any pets, like a dog or a cat, uh, there's a medicine that we give to them called ivermectin. Actually, mm -hmm. ivermectin was in the news talking about 2020 mm -hmm. and the pandemic. So <laughs> ivermectin is a deworming agent, but anyway. It's also given to dogs and cats to prevent them from getting this parasite called a heartworm. So luckily humans can't get it as far as I know, but this is literally worms that live in your heart. And um, yeah, well, if you can imagine that kills you eventually if your heart is full of worms. Well, for, for years, scientists would give um, heartworm medicine, this ivermectin, but, but they didn't understand why it worked. It was only very recently that they actually did a study and they found out why it didn't work. I don't remember the details, but they would try to experiment. Like they would just get like they would get the worm and they would put the, the, the chemical on it and then nothing would happen. The worm would be fine. So they're like, well, how is it preventing it? Well, it turns out it's some kind of more complicated chemical process. Like when that worm is developing and it comes in contact with the chemical, it prevents the worm from making this other chemical. And because it doesn't make that chemical, it ends up getting killed by something else. Anyway, that's just to say that sometimes in science, you know, we know things happen, but we don't understand why they happen. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times with the paranormal, that's what's happening. I think there's real phenomenon going on. We don't really understand what's causing it. You know, the, the common things that people say is like it's an extraterrestrial. It's a it's an extra it's an ultra dimensional being. It's a ghost. Mm -hmm. It's a spirit of someone. Well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, that's why science is there to find those answers. Uh, yeah. But I think there's something there. Um, and I don't think we should dismiss it. Especially the fact that I have like video, like it's not like just my words, like they look at the videos and they, you know, I think either right. people like believe it or they either completely dismiss it like immediately. Yeah, but I gotta, I gotta say, to be honest, I do that sometimes with other people's experiences. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Like I'm the same way. Like there's been a few things that happened to me that I never believed in. I thought people were lying when they spoke about it. But when it happened to me, I'm like, wow, that's real. That that's possible. Yeah. You know, so I do the same thing. So I don't I don't blame anybody for, you know, dismissing or, you know, their feelings on it. It's human nature. Uh, yeah. let's see, we got some more comments here. Great. All right. So we got Brandy says, Rican, have you noticed a correlation between increased African for you and other experiencers you know? Between increased African. Yeah. I'm not sure uh, what the word African is supposed to mean. Yeah, hmm. let's see. Let's let's see the other comments. We, for right for right. right now, Brandy, let us decipher give us a that little, first, Brandy. Yeah, <laughs> give us a little more context. Maybe it's a typo. Here we go. Recon. Oh, okay, here, here's a correction. My bad. I'm sorry, Betty. <laughs> Have you noticed uh, a, an increase in activity for you and experiences? <clears throat> you know, at the same time. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. So I yeah, think she's saying for, for yeah activity between you and experiencers. Yeah, so like perhaps uh, like you and other people having that's activities good, at the same time. Yes, yes, that's, that's happened. There's been a few times where I'll tell somebody something happened one night, and then one or two other people will tell me that something happened to them. You know, the same night. Right. Which that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That's I, a really, that's a really great question, uh, Brandy. That's yeah, a very exciting. Exactly. That's a very scientific question. You're thinking with your like big brain because you're yeah. seeing the big picture because yeah, as a scientist, you try to look at the big trends. You try to look at patterns that happen. And that's a great, mm -hmm. that's a great question. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything else you wanted to add to that? Uh, Rika? Uh, as, as far as the increase in activity, I would say mine's been a steady incline, like steady upwards. <laughs> uh, personally. Yeah. It's never going down. It's just, it's like 
creeping real slow, but it keeps every next events like one notch up, like little increments. So I'm like, it's always increasing for me. Right. I just have breaks in between sometimes. That's all. Damn, sounds rough, buddy. Let's see what else we yeah, got here. I'm used to it. Looking good, John. I agree. John is looking good. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Iowa walks. What happened? Okay, so Iowa walks is new, so he wants to know what happened. I know. I was thinking about this. I was like, we haven't really got into the meat of it, but I, you know, I just want to get people to understand John mm-hmm. a little bit, uh, try to get in his mind. But but Iowa walks. If you stay tuned, we're we're gonna give a timeline of the events. So. Uh, Let's just say he's had some paranormal experiences and we have another one. When you think back to it, does it make your vibration high like you're reliving it? Okay. So if I, if I could understand this question is like, mm-hmm. you know, what is, what are you feeling like when you're remembering these experiences? Um, uh, yeah. Does your body change? What, what's going on there? How do you feel? I feel like I'm there again. <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm just right back there. Everything's like is happening live. You know, all that stuff's like burned in my brain pretty much. I, I can like close my eyes and relive every experience I've had. I remember everyone clear as day, it's super detailed. Like I remember everything. So it's just like reliving it, you know. Um, vibration, yeah, I've, I've had that happen. Thinking about them a few times. I've had it happen more randomly. We can talk about that later. <laughs> sure. Um, okay, so there, there were some questions I had here as well. Let's see. Uh, okay, one of them was, yeah, how do you feel now that you have come out? Uh, do you feel, um, yeah, has anything changed? So looking at the way you were before you came out and chaired it to the way you are now, has there been any change? Uh, yeah, a lot of the fear kind of went away. That's probably the most positive. Um, a little disappointed on how the – how ufology works once i started dabbling a little bit in it uh that was a little bit of a disappointment but uh i feel better overall pretty much still there's a little fear here and there obviously because this stuff just happens out of nowhere so it catches you off guard and you're gonna get shooken up a little bit but I feel better for sure that's good okay and then um I, I guess it's just two more questions before we get into the timeline Mm -hmm. Uh, Another question is, okay, so we're going to talk about all these experiences that have happened. As of right now, what do you think is the best explanation for what is causing these experiences? Uh, What do you think is the best explanation? And maybe you don't have one. I don't know. But um, what do you think? I think all this activity, you know, everything I've dealt with is happening in in one space, you know. All that, you know, the, the beings or ghosts, shadow people, I think it's all happening in the same space because when I record it, it kind of looks like it's in the same space. Everything kind of looks similar. There's kind of like a, a style to everything. Everything kind of matches with each other. So I think everything's in one space, and for some reason, I can see it <laughs> or it interacts with me. I don't know. Or, okay. you know, I always had like a thought, like even with like shadow people, I wonder if like, you know, what if we're shadow people to other places like stuff like that I think about um I mean the possibilities are endless but I believe they interact in the same space maybe not aware of each other but I think it's all I don't know if I want to call it a spectrum I don't know like the scientific term I'm looking for I don't want to say a dimension because I don't know what that is I don't know how to explain that but it's all in the same space I believe and so by they, go ahead go ahead go ahead I was gonna say they interact with some people and some people can see them that's the best way I can describe it. Got you. Okay, so let me see if I if I'm understanding the space concept. So, are you saying like the, the they're from the same space? Are you saying like here's the, like an analogy or like a metaphor? I'm not sure which one it is. But... Actually, I have a better way to explain it before you go on. Okay, it's go like ahead. They're, they're traveling through the same space. If that makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, well. Yeah. Well, the the example I was going to give is like uh, it's kind of like saying well. You know, in biology, we have these different biomes or uh, niches is what they're called. But basically, one niche would be like the rainforest. One would be the desert. One would be the ocean. One would be a lake. So, Mm -hmm. you know, all the animals or all the life, you know, they're they're clumped together. So they inhabit the same space. So all these animals live in the ocean. So they're in that space. 
all these animals live in the desert or in the same space. Uh, is, is that kind of what the idea you're getting from that, that these things are different, but they're coming from the same? Uh, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain it. So, uh, so let's say an uh, illustrator for a cartoon, they draw one frame at a time. So okay. let's say you take one frame and that's like our space. Then you take the next frame and you take that space, but you overlap it. So it's kind of like overlapping our space, like kind of like intermingling. Okay. Uh, and that's just, I get that assumption just from my evidence and what I experienced. It's, it's, okay. Okay. No, that makes sense. Now, okay. So these, these things you're experiencing, it sounds like, I don't want to lead you on here, but so let me know if I'm totally wrong here, mm -hmm. but it sounds like you feel like there's multiple things interacting with you. It's not just one oh, yeah, type of thing, yeah. multiple there, things. So many things. Yes. Okay. I mean, and a pretty long list. Okay. And do you think these things are kind of like, are they natural to the earth? Like, do you think these, these things are everywhere? Um, you think they, they, they belong here or do you think they're I, intruders? Honestly, I think it's a little thing, a little bit of everything. I think I'm experiencing just a whole smorgasbord of all types of stuff, you know. Okay. Um, but somehow when they travel in our space they like travel together it's weird you know because I, I have some footage of orbs that have alien faces and human faces and i try to think like how is that even possible you know in, in, in one in one orb you know and that's why i thought somehow they're together in the same space moving around together you know? okay that makes sense all right well then yeah those are my questions we'll get into uh the timeline now we'll actually talk about what's been happening now do you want me to start the, sl the slideshow and then we can start from the beginning as well is that does that sound good i think we should do the slides after that that way i already explained everything oh, okay. so they can, you know then they can look at the, the footage all right or, or they can yeah. look at them as i'm telling it whatever whatever you want to do is fine um you're, why you're don't you control that all right. Well, the first couple of slides are your house, and I think that's where everything started. Is that correct? Yes. Your, your first yes. house. So let's yeah. just show those pictures, and why don't you go ahead and start talking? Okay. That's and a good uh, idea. about the beginning, yeah. So okay. Let me go ahead and add that. So the red arrow you guys see is pointing to the patio roof, and that window to the left is my bedroom window. So my headboard was against this window, but there's a window on the other side on the other side of this on top of the roof. So I have a second window on the side, but above the roof. And that's the one uh, I seen uh, two beans looking in. So, so when, when, when okay. was this? How, when was this? What year was 90, this? 95. Okay. So 1995, how old were you? 15. You were 15 and it was in 1995 and you were living in this house with the red arrow Yes. Uh, in the back room, and then in what city generally was this in? Outside of Philadelphia. So right outside of Philly, Pennsylvania. Okay. So now we got our time in place. So yeah, go ahead and uh, take it from there. Let us know what happened. Okay, and that drawing is basically why I seen uh, looking in that window. Two of them. Um, that drawing, I would say, is ninety to ninety-five percent accurate. I didn't leave out any details because I can't draw. I left the details out because there wasn't any. What you see is exactly what was there. <laughs> There's not a single other mark or indentation or bone or muscle, nothing at all. This is exactly plain, plain like that. Gotcha. gotcha. That's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, it looks like a uh, well, it looks like a gray uh, that that people yeah. describe was, seeing. It was a little brownish. It had like a uh, like a brownish patchy color above the gray uh gotcha gotcha yeah, okay so, so um you were i think if i remember correctly you were you were home alone when this happened you were 15 years old yes, and this, yep. this was in the evening is this correct this, this around midnight 11 30 between 11 30 and midnight i would say okay it was a friday night friday night or saturday night and you had been um your family had gone on vacation is that correct? Yeah, they, they went on a cruise and I was out playing basketball all day. Uh, came home like 11 p.m. Um, you know, showered, got in bed. And uh, 
it was like within seconds I hopped in bed, my bed started like shaking mm-hmm. and it was crazy. It was like, it started vibrating and then it started shaking and then it started like jumping off the ground. Mm-hmm. Like I'm literally like holding on <laughs> to my mattress and I'm like riding in my bed pretty much. And, uh, and then it just stopped. Everything just stopped. And, uh, at that time I didn't believe in ghosts. So I was like, damn, I had my first paranormal experience. That's, that's crazy. Like I was blown away by that. And then like, immediately i got this sick feeling and i turn to the right and i see two faces like that looking in their faces like directly against the glass right and the one was a little smaller the head size it was a little shorter but looked identical um i don't know if that meant it was like a female or or it was just shorter i don't know i got the impression it was a female and i honestly can't tell you why or how it's just something i feel like that's what it was right um but yeah, and uh, I made eye contact with the taller one. The first thing I saw, and it was just like absolute tunnel vision. It was like everything, everything stopped. My breathing stopped. Every time stopped. It was insane. And I remember asking myself questions. Like it was weird. Like I, when I look back on it, I remember thinking so many things in my head, but the I only looked into its eyes for maybe. 20 seconds it was a long 20 seconds but i just remember thinking like how is this thing in a populated area like this a dense suburb i thought this happened in the desert on you know one one highway that goes through the middle of nowhere that was the right. first thing i thought and then real quick i processed what happened and then i just started trying to take in as much information as i could of what i seen and uh then I got another sick feeling and I looked to the left and I seen uh, the shadow of legs outside my hallway. My hallway light was on and my bedroom light was on. You know, I was sitting up in my bed. And I'm like wide awake, you know, and just everything's like boom, boom, boom. And when I saw that, I was like, shit, I'm, I'm surrounded. I'm like, how is this happening? This is crazy. And uh, oh, dude, I was scared. I ain't gonna lie. I was I was scared. I got, I got into the fetal position, took my sheets, put them over my, my uh, body. Yeah. And uh, I remember I was just so concerned with them touching me. Like, that was like, I kept thinking, it's like just feeling their hands grabbing me. That was yeah. like, I kept thinking that same thought over, 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 and over. And then I woke up on my couch the next morning, hanging off of my clothes backwards and a giant scab on my back. Right, right. Okay, so then you were upstairs when this happened. How long ago? How long do you think that? How long did it last from the point where the bed started shaking to the point where you know you don't remember anything? Now, how long do you think that happened? Because I know it. I know it lasted until the next morning when you wake up. But the, yeah. the period that you were awake, maybe forty-five seconds at the most. Okay. I, when I think about it, it seems like it was like a half hour. <laughs> You know, when I look back, you know, remembering everything, but honestly, I, you know, 30 to 45 seconds, I would say closer to 45 seconds because everything was like bed shaking, look to the right, look to the left, under the blankets. I wake up on my couch, like it happened pretty quick, but uh, oh yeah, I'll say about 45 seconds. So you woke up the next morning downstairs. Once again, you're home alone. You're downstairs. I wasn't downstairs. My living room was on the same floor, but I was oh, in another sorry. room. So yeah. you were in a, okay, okay. Well, th- thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. yeah, I assumed it was downstairs, but okay. So you were in another room. Your face was you were face down on the couch. Uh, were your leg? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, just my upper body was on the couch, and I was like face down. I remember it was like so sunny. I woke up on the couch. I had I felt like I had a hangover. Like, dude, I felt sick. I felt dirty. Like, I just want to take a shower. I, I kept. I wasn't even thinking about what happened last night. I was like, I need to get a shower. Like. I was just in a complete daze and yeah. uh i did get a shower and i felt shampoo run down my back and, and hit this spot and i like jumped in the air it burned like hell and there's a huge scab on my back that wasn't there the night before right and to be honest with you i didn't even equate that scar to the incident until like shit, 12 years later Okay. I didn't even connect it to, you know, until I found somebody who had the exact same story online and it just blew my mind. You know, back then I was, that was the first time anything happened to me. So 
I didn't, I didn't know. I had no idea even connected to, you know, but uh, I've had uh, some people feel around by my uh, pelvic bone and they tell me the tip is missing, like it's flat where the scar is, but I don't have any medical proof of that. But, uh, I th do you want me to show the next picture? I think the next picture is a scar. Yeah, you can uh, show it. Yeah, okay. So here's the uh, – this is, I believe, the scar that you had. Yes. Uh, it's, on, it's on your lower back. In, yes, it's in like red. Yeah, right very by my back. And uh, even to this day, sometimes it will burn intensely mm -hmm. to the point where I'm uncomfortable and have a hard time sitting. I don't know why the heck that happens with a scar that's, you know, almost 30 years old. But when that happens, that, that freaks me out, man. Yeah, we've we've had a guy on Black Lotus who uh, he directed a movie about his experience when he was a little boy. Um, yes, a lot of it's story similar. This guy he uh, he saw like a small alien that looked kind of like Ultraman, kind of like an insect. He was short, and apparently they got like in a little fight in the stairs, and that little alien touched him on the shoulder, knocked him down the stairs, and now he's got this big scar in that area. Wow. And, um, yeah, so these, it seems, yeah, I have a couple, <laughs> unfortunately. Let's, uh, let me go to the, some of the comments real fast. Sure. Okay. We got, um, okay. So then the first comment we have, Betty says perhaps the exists in the same frequency. I think she's talking about the, the different things you see record and experience in your room. Yeah. Yeah. I can, yeah. Something like that. I, I know they're traveling in the same. I mean, I, I assume when it comes to like recording, I'm recording everything like in the same. I don't even know what to call it. I don't know. Well, well a lot of your recording is done uh, with an infrared camera, uh, yes. which, which so that's a different spectrum that we we, we normally can't see. So the yeah, science. That's what I'm so like, I think they're all in the same spectrum. Somehow they tr maybe somehow here that's how they travel. I don't know. It's okay. it's, it's tough to say for sure. Yeah, the, the way the infrared camera works, infrared cameras are used a lot for nighttime vision. So the way they work is that um, the, the camera itself has a little emitter on top. So it's got a little thing that shoots out infrared rays. Mm -hmm. And now these infrared rays hit everything in the environment and they bounce back. And when they bounce back, the camera picks it up and it forms an image. And because it's, it's making the image with infrared light, infrared light is invisible. It doesn't light up anything. So a lot of times infrared is used for um, it's used for uh, night vision because, like I said, it doesn't rely on a regular camera relies on uh, the regular spectrum of light, the visible spectrum of light mm -hmm. hitting objects and bouncing back. Mm -hmm. But the infrared camera relies on invisible infrared light hitting it. So whenever yeah. you catch something like an orb or something, basically that that which are which is the reason why you're seeing it is because there's something there that the, the infrared beam is hitting and then bouncing back. So hmm. that, that's what's happening, basically. I, I've never, I'm pretty sure I've never recorded anything without infrared. Right. Which that made me think they're all on the same spectrum. And yeah, that's a really fascinating in, thing is that, you know, for the longest time, infrared cameras were not readily available. The public didn't have infrared cameras. I mean, you could get them, but now you could just buy one at the at Walmart or Home Depot. Yeah. And, I, it, and people are starting to see like 35 bucks dude to cheap yeah it works fine i keep thinking i need to get one pretty soon to start experimenting with it but yeah now it's a new thing it's a new technology and people are seeing things and you know they're not familiar with them um so we're all on this journey now all our all our consumers everybody who's buying these infrared cameras we're, we're trying to understand this new where it's literally a new set of eyes we're seeing the world in ways that we didn't see them before and of course a lot of it's confusing we're trying to make sense of that um so Iowa says he was also born in 95. You guys are the same age. Oh, no, no, actually, you're not the same no. age. You, 15 uh, you're years 15, older. 15 years older than him. Okay. Um, uh, he said he also felt a fe Iowa says he felt a female vibe from the source as well. And, you know, to be honest, I I didn't accept this till probably a couple of years ago, but I felt like a positive vibe. Like, I know they weren't there to like do damage or hurt me, you know, but the situation was still terrifying regardless. Yeah. But that I had a hard time trying to grasp that, you know, but you know, I can say that I feel like they were there in concern. 
At least that's yeah. how I felt at the time. You know, I don't want to compare you to a dog or a cat, Rika, and I'm really not doing that. But it reminds me of these dogs and cats that get terrified when they go to the veterinarian. Um, but, you know, the veterinarian, a lot of times, well, I mean, it's it's the goal of a veterinarian to not cause any suffering. So the veterinarian is, is trying to help this animal, whether it's I know the veterinarians, you know, euthanize animals, but that is also to end suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, but more than often than not, you know, a veterinarian is trying to help an animal uh, have a higher quality of life. But a lot of times those animals are still scared. Mm -hmm. Okay. Iowa says, I call it a flash. And then Randy says, the thing I saw was a female. Can't explain how I know that either. Just like you do. Okay. So you guys are getting this, this, this feminine energy, this feminine something. I mean, it's, I don't know what it is either. I mean, like sometimes, you know, you look at a dog or a cat and you're like, that's a girl, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just know. I don't it's, know if that's what it's like. Because the only only thing that maybe, well, physically they look different, like shaped like a, a male and female, I guess. But the other thing I forgot to mention is the shorter one was standing slightly in front of the taller one, almost like a prom picture type stand, so like a wedding picture. Mm -hmm. And that also made me believe it was female. And, and the fact that I feel like I just know. Yeah. Like, I don't have any proof or nothing really to prove that, but I just feel like I just know, you know. Now, now these beings, these physical beings you saw, do you think they're, are they, you think, are they from Earth? Are they from another planet? Are they from another dimension? Are they from another time? Or none of the above? I don't want to lead you on. I mean, where do you think they're coming from? I think they're from one of them. I also think there's beings coming from all of them. Okay. I just okay. think that they're coming from everywhere. All those suggestions you made i think they're all possibilities for all different even ones from the future you know ones from here ones from the past who knows they can be coming from anywhere you know the more the more i think about it i think a planet is probably less likely just because of the distance you know right. i think they're coming from you know dimensions i think they're just hopping right over i don't think they're traveling too because it doesn't make sense i mean if they're coming from somewhere it's going to be really really far and it doesn't it's, you know it's not efficient you know what I'm Got saying? It. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense, of course. Yeah. Got some more comments here. Um, uh, Iowa Walks wants to know, were you literally sweating when this happened? I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't sweating. I wasn't breathing. I wasn't blinking. <laughs> Everything just stopped, man. Gotcha. Everything just stopped, you know. Okay. And then um, Heart Portal, I bet. So Iowa Walks is saying a Heart Portal. We have someone else here. Scotty B. That's crazy. It's an eye opener. Is this is this one of your friends, Scotty B? I believe so. Yes, I haven't seen him in a while. Okay. Well, thank you for being here, Scotty. Thank you for supporting Weekend. Okay. And then I walk says, I saw a village on fire. People reaching out of it and screaming for me. Interesting. So perhaps wow. he was doing some, some <laughs> kind of traveling, astral traveling. Uh, Nancy K. Hello, everybody. Hey, Nancy. Nancy's been here Hello. for. For a few episodes thank you for nice. being here nancy always ask you always ask, ask really good question uh brandy says hello iowa walk says hi as well everybody thank you for being nice to uh nancy hot enough out there for it yeah it's very hot <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, it's probably going to be the coolest summer of our lives so we should enjoy it <laughs> that's true yeah okay uh okay so yeah so now we'll, i think we've caught up on our comments okay um what else was I gonna ask you? Okay, well, um, okay, yeah. So you so you woke up on the bed. So you said, were you like kind of like in a praying position? Because you said it was just like your upper body was on the face down on the couch. It, so it was like woke... a, it was like I got thrown on it like a rag doll. Okay. <laughs> you know, I was like face down, like kind of half off, and my legs were just dangling there, like you know, it was like someone just threw me there. Like and the I got dropped there. I don't know. And the clothes you said were up, were inside out or backwards? My, my, or my shorts were, yeah. My shorts were backwards. Okay. So the strings, shorts... strings were in the back, yes. Okay. And, and your, uh, what about your socks, your shirt, underwear? How were those clothes? Were they normal? or? I, I, I believe they were normal. I don't remember about those two, but I know for sure the shorts were. So I, I can't say for sure about the other two. That's very odd. Yeah, it's, that's, that's an odd thing for sure. Um, let me see. Mr. Crowley says... Um, Interesting so far. Yeah. Okay. Hasn't even started. 
<laughs> yeah, we're just getting warmed up. Uh, so then, um, did, so did you tell your your family about this experience when they got back? How, how much longer was it until they came back? Two days after. Okay. Two days, I remember I, the next night I slept in the living room. I didn't go back in my room until they came back. Okay. Uh, and to this day, they don't know. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Interesting. And then, and then, um, did you, did you, did you, did you think about this after often or did you bury it or did you, you know, what was, what was going on? Did you think about this or not? Uh, for the next few years, not really. I mean, I really try not to think about it, but, uh, as experiences kept happening, you know, I kept looking back at this and, uh, you know, I got to a point when I was like 30, it was like really bothering me, like completely affected my life. But until that point, it was just dealing with experiences and, you know, but uh, the fear didn't kick in until 15 years later and it hit me hard, like a ton of bricks, man. It's never been, <laughs> never been the same since. I, it messed me up. I don't even know why it happened. So, yeah, so moving on then, I guess, is that your – so now that we, we, we have this 90, 1995 experience, you're 15 years old. In the timeline, what happens next? Is it 15 years later or is there something that happens? Oh, no, there's, there's many things that happen okay. in between, yeah. So, okay, so I'll let you take it over then. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think it was two days after that experience, I was playing basketball at night with my buddy, and I'm, I'm watching the shooting star, you know, go across the sky. So I like completely stopped playing. I was like, man, I, I never seen one before. I was like, man, that's pretty cool. But once it got to the middle of the sky above me, it completely stopped. And it stopped for like 30 to 40 seconds. And I was telling my friend, I was like, yo, you got to look at this. This is crazy. And he thought I was going to try to steal the basketball from him, which I've done this stuff before. So I can't even blame him. But I'm like flipping out. You got to look. He's like, F you. I'm not, you're not taking the ball from me. So I'm just staring at it, sitting there. And then it just takes off, like in the blink of an eye, the other half of the sky. But as it was going across the first half, it was going slow, like a shooting star. And then paused for like 30 seconds and then just took off the rest of the way. Mm. And uh, I don't know if that was a UFO, but I don't know what the hell can stop like that. It looked, it was like, it looked like a star in the sky, you know, just like a following star. Yeah. But when it stopped, you know, it was like, that's not normal, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. So then if okay. I could go, if I could go back real fast, I meant to ask this. Um, so before that 1995 experience, the one we're, we're talking about now, we're, we're within the same week, I think, did you, were you interested at all in UFOs? Did you watch the X-Files? Were you familiar with the typical idea of a gray uh, alien movies? What was your I would experience? Watch, I would watch like the documentaries. I think it was like history channel when used to have like good documentaries on, the old like Roswell I was into and stuff like that. Not too big, but I thought I believed it. You know, I thought it was cool. I believed in it. You know, I bought the the autopsy VHS back in the day, yeah. you know, watching <laughs> with my friends. So I was into it, you know, and I, I had the belief that it was something that rarely happened. And it happened in the middle of nowhere, you know, when like no right. one's around. That's true. That's true. You did say that. Yeah, you did say that yeah. you had thought about it, but you, in your, in your mind, you were like, "This is a con this is for country folk." Not for that's what so you saw. That's what you saw on TV all the time when they yeah. reenact stuff. It's usually like one highway in the middle of nowhere, you know. Right. So that's I thought that's how it happened. I was totally wrong. <laughs> all right. We have another comment here from Nancy. She says, "I have I have heard that the Greys are half biological, half tech." What does the guest think? What impressions did he get about their texture, color, skin temperature? That's a, I've asked the same questions actually. That's, uh, that's a good question. So that's a, yeah, that's a good question. So, okay, so so let's let's answer that. So okay, uh, let's each piece by itself. Okay, so the first question, part of the question is when you saw these two grays in the in the in the at uh, the other side of the window, did you think they were technologically? Do you think they were biological, or do you, th you think they were half and half? I would have to lean towards biological and being created. Um, okay. They were completely uh, emotionless. They didn't move. They didn't, the most blank stare you can ever imagine. There's like zero sway to them. They, they look. They look like a robot, but they looked flesh and blood. You know, they didn't have 
I mean, they're not human, so I guess they want to have like human emotions. But like when I looked at them, they didn't react whatsoever. You think maybe they'd be like, you know, move a little bit or you know, it's a little little something, and it was nothing at all, which that creeped me out too. But right. like a I, I, was, I can half biological, I can see that being a possibility, you know. But from the outside, they, they, you got the if I if I'm understanding correctly, you got the idea that they're made of flesh and blood or whatever of, yeah. of, of tissue. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, you, can, but you also think they were made maybe like in a factory tissue. Is that what you're like saying? Or like created biologically? Is that like what you said? Like, I'm, like, yeah, I'm yes, not trying yes. to put words in your mouth, but yeah, that, uh, I meant like a biologically like maybe created by another being, you know? Yeah, like engineered, the, like uh, yes, in, uh, yeah, something like that. Yes. So they were. So you're saying this isn't an animal that came up through evolution. This isn't like an animal that has millions of years of history and nature, and it became what it is. That's not what you think. You think. Something- I mean, I've only I only seen them for like thirty seconds, but from all the information I can absorb, I would, you know, I think they were created by, you know, somebody or something else. Got it. Like the worker bee type thing, you know. Got it. Um, but I, okay. I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, these are just your impressions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My opinion, yeah so. But you know, it's more the information than most of us have. I mean, yeah, 40, that's what everyone knows. These aren't these are like facts. I don't have proof of this, but it's you know it's right. what I can judge from the experience. Okay, now what was it? Now let's talk about the texture. What was the texture of their bodies? How would you describe the, it? Their their skin was like ours, but uh, uh, maybe look a little thicker, possibly. You know, you know how we have like the we look at a microscope, you can see the cracks in with like in the skin, yeah. kind of. Well, theirs look the more prominent. Mm. Um, they they have pores in their skin. I can see the pores, and their face was like damp. So uh, like it, an, a, amphibian, maybe like you know how their okay. skin looks has like a damp shine to it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. like that. So do you think? Do you think if you were to touch one, it would feel like a frog, maybe, or like a salamander? I think it would feel like our skin's a little, little rougher and moist. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. then the color. What was the color? Do you think it was it was gray, but uh, had brown patches, um, hmm. which was weird. I didn't I wasn't expecting that. And so I haven't heard it? much about anybody else uh, explaining a, like a brownish one either. But uh, yeah, it was like a patchy brown. So it wasn't uniform. It had little patches. No, not it? at all. No. It was it was subtle, but I noticed it. Is there any animal you could tell us that has the same kind of patchy colors on their skin that you could think of that we could compare it to? Maybe, ah, not really. Like, because the brown was so subtle, but you know it was noticeable. I almost want to say a dinosaur, but I think the dinosaurs some colors are too prominent. Like it was very subtle brown, but I definitely seen it. Like an orange is brown, I would say. Okay. And then what about the skin temperature? Did you, do you feel like, what What did you think? What was the impression you got about how, how? If, the if I had to guess, I would say cold just because of the, the dampness on it, maybe. Okay. If I, I never even thought of that, but if I had to guess, I would say on the cool side, but that was the first time I was asked that. It's a good question. Do you think, now the eyes, did you think the eyes were like maybe, they were, they were black, right? They were all black? Yeah. Did you think that was some people say those are just contact lenses on top and they actually have a, a, cor- a cornea or like an iris and a pupil? Did you, did you get that impression? Do you think that it was just literally just all black? What I saw was all black, like a lens. It looked like a, it was, I don't want to say it looked like a lens. It was shiny. They're very shiny and reflective. But they looked like they were just resting on the face. There was no indentation in the skin or any wrinkles around the eyes to show that it was like part of the face. I mean, just picture taking a lens and just gently placing it on something and having no effect on the face itself. Okay. Just like the picture I showed you, just like that. It's just like it was just sitting there. Yeah, let's go ahead and... And it it wrapped around slightly a little bit. But yeah, oh, that's yeah. All the, the, that's all the detail there was, is it? Yeah, the wraparound is very important. Yeah, the wraparound. The, the, is very the lips, like it didn't have lips, but the the skin kind of curled in at the slit yeah. of the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. Yeah, and you know, I a, saw. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. And it had the two things for the nose, but there was like no nose bridge or any protrusion to show there was a nose. It was just like just two holes on the face. It's crazy how like perfectly 
symmetrical and the shape of this was that always yeah. blows me away it was like just look perfect interesting and then we got uh iowax says boosted and nancy says i heard that too the black is just a covering okay great but it was weird as i don't know how it attached because it, it literally looked like it was sitting on the face there wasn't even yeah. a crease in the skin where the eye lens met the face there's nothing so it's some people ask me if I thought it was like a helmet or, you know, and I, I, well, I guess if they can make a helmet look biological, maybe, but it looked flesh and blood. I mean, if they have technology like that, that'd be crazy. But, uh, and, uh, Iowa Walks wants to know, uh, this is a good question as well. Did you hear a voice or get a message? A lot of times these are supposed to be telepathic. Did, did you get heard a voice? Uh, not in that situation. No. There was zero information whatsoever, which I thought was weird. A lot of people say they get a download or a message. I mean, yeah. this was just a staring contest. Yeah. I lost. <laughs> I lost. There's other other things going on to the left. I had to look away. But All right. So we could uh, move on. So you had this experience. Two days passed. You were playing basketball again. You saw the star. And it moved very strangely. It stopped and it shot off. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. let's take it from there. So then what happened next? Okay. So I think the next experience was two years later. I'm in my bedroom in the same house playing PlayStation. And I remember it's so clear. I was sitting Indian style on the floor just playing PlayStation. And then in one blink of an eye, I'm in my driveway talking to my friend in the middle of a conversation. That his day blows me away because i remember like the first thing i i thought was like how the f did i get outside like this is ridiculous i'm thinking and my friends his lips are moving but i can't hear him i can only kind of hear my thoughts i'm like this is ridiculous and i was slowly able to hear his voice and i kind of jumped into the conversation because mm -hmm. i didn't know what, what was going to tell the guy <laughs> you know like what yeah. the, i had no idea what was going on and I just went on with my day. Uh, so how long was, how? what was the time skip there? So you uh, were playing, I have no idea. You don't know what day that was? I, like, you... I have no clue. Okay. Interesting. I didn't even think to check. I was, I was just baffled. I, I thought like maybe I could have missed time, but I've never done that before. Like just forgotten or it's just, it was weird. I, like, I, I came to in the middle of a conversation. But when you were playing PlayStation, what time was it? Oh, oh this was like in the early afternoon. I mean, it was summertime. It was sunny out, noonish. I'll so say you're... around noon, noon to three, somewhere in that window. And then when you were talking to your friend, what time of day was it? I had no idea. I didn't even think to check. Okay. You know, there's a lot of mistakes I made like that throughout the years. Where uh, yeah, well, you were kind of young. Know. I think you were about seventeen at this time. Yeah. So you were yeah I'm, I'm just at that point, I'm just like, why is this weird stuff happening? You know, and also I kind of brushed it off because I had really, really had no one to talk to about it in depth like that, you know, so I was just like, just dealt with it. So that happened. Uh, okay. The following year, I was at my friend's house who lived around the corner from that same house. I slept over, we were playing video games or whatever, and I slept in his basement on a couch. So I opened my eyes and there's a, a female ghost standing, I'll say at the most three feet from me. So I'm laying on my side, I'm looking at it. Uh, I started popping my eyes. I was like, what? There's, there's no way. So I sit up and now I'm sitting up and we're just looking at each other. Just no emotion, not moving, just staring at each other the same way as it being. And this happens a lot to me. I don't, things just like to stare at me. And it was, I never believed in ghosts until then. I was 100% confident they didn't exist. Didn't even cross my mind. I mean, but it was like, you know, three feet in front of me. It, uh, it was a woman. She had like a dress on. She was glowing. Uh, she was glowing different shades of white. And she was like uh, a little transparent. You know, dude, almost like what you see in movies, man. Yeah. I mean, seriously, like full, full head to toe. And that went on probably for like a minute. I was just 
same thing. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't blink. I was just stuck, just stuck staring in my eyes. So I wake my friend up like this. That went on for a minute and it kind of like missed it away. So I woke my friend up. I told him what happened and he starts freaking out. So he goes upstairs and comes down. And he shows me a picture. He's like, this is who you saw. I was like, yo, that's exactly what I seen. And he, he told me that was his aunt who hung herself in that house like 15 Whoa. years prior. Damn. And that was the last time I stayed over there <laughs> overnight. But that was the first and last time I've ever seen a ghost. Okay. But I mean, it was full figured, undeniable, clear as day. Like, you know, I feel almost lucky seeing one that clear, that close. I mean, the detail on it was, it was just like a person just all white glowing. The detail is amazing. And what did, um, what would the clothes look like? Did it have, did she have clothes on? And what was style of clothes? It was like a dress, but it was just like the beans. Like once I looked at the eyes, you know, kind of like locked. So I'm yeah. trying to gain all the information that I can in my peripherals while I'm looking at her in the eye, you know, because I can see her whole body, but I'm like, I'm just locked right. in, man. Absolutely. And, uh, wow. Yeah. But, you know, she took her life uh, in that house. And unfortunately, my friend, who lived there took his life like two years after that oh which, really this the same friend yeah yeah oh same friend which is weird you know but uh yeah that was my first introduction to the paranormal wow okay um, well that's intense yeah and, and, then, and then so then i had a break for like four or five years i would say okay. you know I, I was waking up with weird marks and stuff on me but i never thought anything of it now thinking back First, I would have so many pictures by now, you know, but I never thought to even think that was possible. Like, it never crossed my mind. You know, I'd be like, how the hell did I get this, these, like, you know, pinholes on my arms? I don't know. Whatever could have happened during the day. And that was it. Never I think the, ne- the next set of pictures in, in order, I think, are uh, marks you have on your body. Do you you think this is a good time just to share those pictures since you've started talking about marks? Uh, I'll wait. I have a few more things I'd like to share first. Okay, go ahead. Yep. That's cool. So so after the ghost, you know, it was like five years, five, six years, you know, it was pretty calm. Uh, so I moved to an apartment with uh, one of my exes, like right around the corner from that house, like like a 10-minute walk. And uh, we go to sleep one night, and I wake up sitting up in the bed with, uh, you know, with like a, a, a can of soda. I'm, I'm holding a can of soda upside down. Mm-hmm. completely paralyzed i cannot move and it's just pouring like all over my clothes and all over the bed my girlfriend's next to me on her hands and knees like screaming at me she's like freaking freaking out but i can't hear her i can't move i can only move my eyes and immediately i'm like yo this this isn't this isn't right you know like i'm watching the soda pour all over me. Like, first of all, like, how does, how's an open can of soda getting your hand upside down? So, right. so it, this this is going on probably for, like, till the whole can's empty. I watched the yeah. whole can empty, and as soon as that can's empty, I'm able to move. And I can hear my girl, and she keeps screaming. He's like, "There's three guys outside the window. There's three guys outside the window." Whoa! And like, I'm just covering in soda. I'm like. What the heck just happened? She was freaked out after that. Like she, I know that affected her, and she might have seen some stuff that she never told me. But I know, you know, that was a that was a crazy uh, night. But what 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 gets me is how am I sitting in bed holding an upside down can of soda, mm-hmm. and then open it, and then become paralyzed? You know. This is a crazy theory, but this is one of the only explanations I can think of is that something was messing with me, almost like sure. a like a prank. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like if I opened a can of soda upside down from the kitchen, it would have poured everywhere. Like even if someone, if even try to pretend to open a can of soda upside down, it's so awkward that I don't even think you would do it if you were sleepwalking. It just totally makes no sense. You know, I think it was put in my hand, and so yeah. I think opened it. And then took off. Now, you know? it kind of reminds I, me. Of, go ahead. Go ahead. I, just, yeah, I know that sounds crazy, 
yeah. the explanation, but that's exactly what happened. I can't really think of anything else, especially because my girl says she saw people outside the window. This is like three o'clock in the morning, you know. And that you, was, said that was she, more you said she was on her hands and knees on the floor. Is that correct? No, no, on the bed next to me. Okay. Like she's like, she's to my left on her hands and knees looking at me. Oh, okay. Just like, I see her lips. She's screaming my name, but I cannot hear anything she's saying. And she's screaming. She's screaming because of uh, what is the cause of her screaming? Uh, I, I just want to know specifically: is it because of you with the soda, or is it because of the people outside the window, or is it both of them? Or I, is I think it's else? both. I mean, when I wasn't, she probably freaked out because I'm not being responsive, and something crazy is like she's with, like she must have been blown away is watching me do this, you know, and then see some you know people looking in the window. What she called people, you know, I can only assume it was something else. I don't know for sure, but I don't know why you, three three people be looking in my window at three o'clock in the morning while I'm pouring soda on myself. <laughs> you no, know, it just don't make sense. Were you were you guys living in a one bedroom apartment at that time? Like yeah, was, yeah. okay. So the, the window was also it was ground level, and this wow. was the first time I lived in a ground level place since '95, and that was freaking me out too because like, I kept thinking it's easy access, easy access for them. You know, like. I thought about that all the time. That, that bothered me probably for a year, just even living on the first floor. Right. Now, did you get her um, – later on, did you talk to your girlfriend and basically get her story? You know, like what did – what is her timeline for that night? Do you know – did you talk to her about that? Like what did, hap what did I, she remember happening? As far as I remember, we really didn't talk about it after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, That's typical for paranormal stuff. I, I mean, mean, I've had I – mean, we had to flip the mattress. We had to change the sheets. Like we're all both distraught. We both had different experiences, you know, hers was different than mine. Right. Um, so, so I'm a little questions. Uh, was the soda cold? Was it warm? Was it room temperature? It was cold. Remember? It was like just got out of the refrigerator. Okay. That's what I was going to ask. Okay. So that, so the time, so what would have had to happen is like, yeah, it came from the refrigerator because it was cold. And then, yeah. okay. So well, I would, have to, I would have had to run the refrigerator, grab a soda, hop into bed, sit up, open it upside down, and then get paralyzed immediately. Or right. open it, move my hand away from it because my hand was out, had one hand reached out, like right, right. above me, and the other hand was to the side. Like, and it's crazy. Like, I'm watching this stuff happen, and I can't even move my lips or anything. I can't react. Like, everything is in my mind reacting. Like, I'm. It's like explosions going off my brain. Like I just want to scream and, and like, you know, get up. You just, sure. can't do anything, man. It's man, that's, that's a crazy feeling. That's crazy, man. Okay, um, we got some comments here, and then I, I do want to comment about that as well. But we have Mr. Crowley saying, "My house had poltergeists, and of course, alien activity. They go hand in hand for some reason." Yeah, I've heard yeah. that too. I, I think all this stuff is hand in hand. I think it all somehow is all connected. I, I don't know how, you know, but uh, yeah. I mean, I've had so many different types of experiences. I can only assume it's connected because in my life, you know, they're all connected. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I mean, poltergeist um, activity, oh. poltergeist activity is basically just you see things moving around where they're where they shouldn't be moving, like invisible. Uh -huh. So it could be like, I mean, a lot of things could cause poltergeist activity. Like, you know, they have invisibility. This is just a crazy example, but like they have invisibility suits now. So if somebody had an invisibility suit and came in your house and was throwing stuff around, that would technically be poltergeist activity. Um, so it could be, I'm saying if there is a weird entity, um, mm -hmm. it could just invisibly be messing with you. And that would be an explanation for the poltergeist yeah. activity. I didn't experience poltergeist activity till a couple of years ago until my last apartment. I seen uh I seen a glass fly off my uh counter and smash on the ground. Right. And uh I have a I have a video recording of my sheets moving when I'm not in the room. But that's about it. Mr. Crowley says, I'm assuming you have moved before or since. Do you experience these things in every place? Every, everywhere I've lived since I was 15. Got it. And every place is always a different experience. It's never, besides shadow people and orbs, nothing ever happens more than once. I get like a 
it's a one-time thing with everything. It's crazy how it works. You know, you think if you see, you see a ghost, you would see ghosts often. You know, I see a ghost once. You think if you're being abducted by aliens, you might see them more than once. I've only seen them once, you know. And as I tell you stories, these are all one-time things, like the missing time and all that stuff. And with the incident in the bed being paralyzed, is a one-time thing, you know. It's, it's, it's nuts. That's right. Uh, Crowley, Mr. Crowley also says, dude, I would love to bring equipment to where you live and monitor while you sleep. Um, well, that, <laughs> go ahead. that's something I like to do in the future with, uh, you know, a few people, you know, at the moment I, I can't do any of that where I'm staying, but the next place I move to is going to be one giant experiment. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going all in and like, I'm going to rig the whole entire place, top to bottom, every room I'm going right. all in next time, you know? I learned what works, what doesn't work. So when I'm ready for round two, you know, I'll let you know. Great. And at this point, I, I wanted to also mention something. So he's he's talking about, about monitoring your sleep. Okay. So my question is this to you. Like, look, to me, whenever someone's having a paranormal problem, um, I always, first of all, you know, I always believe the person. I don't think anybody's being dishonest. But a lot of times, you know, People don't like the paranormal things happening. They want these things to end. And so we, we usually agree that the goal is to end these things from happening. And so I always think, well, you know, let's try the easiest things first. What is the easiest way of ending these paranormal things? So some things I suggest to people are like, you know, getting a sleep study. Like I said, just I've had a sleep study where you're monitored by a doctor to see if you have abnormal sleep patterns. Like, once again, I'm not saying that these things don't happen. And I, I, I think everybody who says they happen is honest. I'm just saying, wouldn't it be great if, if if you were just having a sleep problem? And then it could be easily resolved because that's the goal is to end it. And then, you know, if it doesn't help, well, then, you know, you know, it's something more serious. But those are the, some of the easiest things you could do is like uh, have a sleep study to monitor. The other thing is that... Um, I, I was studying some researcher who studied alien abduction, and she was saying that some forms of epilepsy may cause people to experience like religious activity. OK, like um, that's one explanation. But another explanation could be, you know, perhaps there's something in the brain like a, like maybe a part of your brain is being triggered or you are having epileptic fits. But it could be that those epileptic fits, they're not making you see things that aren't there. It could be that those epileptic fits are making you see things that are there. For instance, for, so what I'm saying is like those things are real, but the reason you see them and other people don't is because you're having epilepsy and you don't know about it. And if once again, if the goal is to end, you know, the suffering, well, then a, a simple solution would be to see a, a medical professional. So, so my next question to you is, once again, I, I will say I, I believe you. I think you're being honest. But I think we have the same goal that you want to uh, stop your suffering. And I think it's not just you. I think every a lot of people who have paranormal activity, they have the same goal. They want to end suffering. Mm -hmm. So have you have would you consider or have you done something like like seeing a medical professional to get to, to just see if there's something that could be easily fixed? Uh, you know, I would have thought that was a good idea a few years ago. Um, now I'm interested in trying to figure this out. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, if you would ask me that same question, uh, you know, two years ago or before 2020, I would tell you to sign me up. Let's do this. But uh, I feel like I'm onto something as far as uh, collecting evidence of paranormal activity. And uh, how do I explain this? It's like I, I, I know it's there now. So I kind of feel like when I step away, sometimes it's a weird feeling knowing there's stuff going on that I'm not capturing, like the stuff I can't see, knowing it's there, you know, kind of gets at me. So I kind of accepted this, this life, I think recently, you know, I'm, I'm more ready to go deeper, I would say, than try to fix anything at this point. Uh, I I don't think I could back back out now, especially with some of the stuff I've captured on film. You know, um, I just feel I have an opportunity to one day get that 
that one that one video you know that just nobody can really deny gotcha. and you know but i try to do it naturally too you know i'm not like i just turn on the camera and walk away i don't i'm not like you know really digging for the stuff but stuff happens around me if i'm recording i'm gonna catch some of it you know and i figure if anyone has the opportunity to get that that you know that one good piece of evidence why not me okay well that's fair that's fair now would you say um uh once again i, I i'm trying really hard um and not, not just with you but with everybody i, I really don't want to ask any leading questions like i don't want to ask you a question and kind of like try to give you the answer in the question so i'm trying no, no, to... i'm always i'm always going to tell you what i think man i'll worry about that okay um so so my question is uh, is it, so is your goal now, is your goal with these experiences to find a solid evidence? And is, 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 the, is that your goal, number one, I guess? And number two, um, is it your goal to, to, to stop suffering from these experiences? Those are two questions, I guess. Is, it, is your goal, if I'm hearing you correctly, is your goal to find strong evidence to support your claims? Uh, and uh, do you have a goal of ending some of the suffering that's being caused? Yeah, I, my goal is to, uh, you know, keep going with trying to collect data and, you know, evidence just just because for the single fact I have the opportunity to, you know, it's, sure. this stuff is kind of, especially with the footage, it's kind of presented itself, you know, I didn't go looking for this stuff. It, it kind of presented itself to me. And, you know, as I, it's almost I do it because I can in a way. Like, you know, I have to live with this shit anyway. I have to deal with this stuff, you know, on through my whole life. I might as well try to prove it or collect evidence. And, uh, you know, and it also feels kind of good to share, you know, real what I believe is real paranormal, you know, evidence, you know, so I know there's a lot of uh, fakery and stuff out there. So personally, it's a good feeling to know that I at least contributed some compelling footage that somebody's seen. Okay. You know, uh, as far as stopping it, I, I think that's pretty much impossible. I don't think, I mean, this, there's, it hasn't been any letting up. It, what usually happens is it progresses. I get to a point where, I don't want to go any further and then it stops and then it creeps up and I can go a little further and then I, I, I keep getting scared and stop, you know, if, uh, is, is the activity causing you distress? Are you, are you being distressed? I know in the past up, up to this point, as far as your timeline, I know we're not to the present, but up to this story you've been telling me, it's been causing you a lot of distress. So if you just jump to the present right now, are, are you being, are you feeling distressed? Yeah, a little bit. It affects a lot of aspects, you know, of my life. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, you know, I'll talk about the present stuff later, but, like, I have a situation now where, like, something's jumping on me while I'm sleeping. You know, that affects me waking up feeling something on top of me. It affects my day because I'm thinking about, like, what the heck happened last night, you know, then, you know, just it's always, it, it affects me one way or another. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, I really have the attitude of um, to give you an example, like, you know, I, I really have the attitude that people should choose how they live their life. You know, and I don't think it's anybody's decision to make for them. Here's an example. Like, you know, you may hear your friend complain about his job because he hates his job, you know. Um, and so you may try to help your friend be like, why don't you find a better job or why don't you quit your job? But you don't know what your friend's thinking. Perhaps your friend's like, yeah, I complain a lot about my job, but I like the pay or I like working with this guy or I like having my weekends off. So it's really the it's that choice of that person, whether they want to have that job, even though they complain about it. And even though it maybe causes them distress, you don't know, you know, it's their choice. It's their life. Uh, and that's kind of like how I feel in your situation. I mean, this is your life. You're living it. And so these choices are yours to make it. There's no wrong answer. I mean, I'm not going to judge you for whatever you do. I think um, the only thing I say is, you know, if you, if you are feeling distressed, I'm definitely here to help you. That's that's the only thing I'll say. But it's your choice. Appreciate that. 
Yeah, I mean, it's like a 50-50 thing, you know, but I feel like I'm like in too deep at this point to just go back. <laughs> you know, like I, I just feel like it's it's been going on so long. I've learned a lot and got a lot of good evidence. I feel like it's like no turning back. And at this point, I've kind of accepted it as much as I right. possibly can. You know, it still, still lingers. It bothers me a little bit, but, you know. And in that regards, I can help you definitely because you're talking about you're saying words like data and evidence and prove. Well, I, I mean, I we'll talk about it when we get to the other section. But I mean, I can definitely help you uh, to get all that stuff. Um, basically, yeah, the, sci the scientific method. OK, so Iowa says I practice mixing my dreams into reality for invention ideas. Last time I did it, I was given a game and two tiny green lights in each eye. When I, then I was awake. Okay. So he, he likes to mix his dreams with his reality and he gets, he gets new ideas. He was given a game and two tiny green lights in each eye. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So he's kind of embracing, Iowas is embracing his imaginal life or the life of his dreams with his real life, which that's, that's, a, that's, I mean, a lot of people do that. A lot of creative people get inspiration from their dreams. Mm. Um, Okay, then Nancy says, uh, do, do you have siblings? Do they experience paranormal activity or alien things as well? That's a good question. My brothers mentioned it. I mean, we talked about this briefly one time, and that was pretty much it. It's it's like an awkward topic it to is, talk yeah. about uh, my family. I don't know. It is. You know, uh, I showed him a couple uh, pictures I had. But we, I didn't get in. No one really knows in, de in depth what's going on in my family. Uh, I haven't told them really. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, gotta go. Team rewatch. Okay, thank you, Brandy. Yeah, definitely. It'll the episode will be here, um, and you could always leave any comments um, after this is played, and I, I respond to all the comments, and I'm sure uh, John will respond as well after the fact if you leave mm -hmm. any questions for him. For sure. And Mr. Crowley says, that's why I would uh, love to monitor it with my equipment. You can't fix or address a situation until you know, you know what's going on. Very good. Okay. Okay, so we're caught up with comments. So now I think if our timeline is correct now, we, we we're leaving the time when you were with your girlfriend yes. and you woke up with the soda. Now, what yes. year was this and how old were you? Just to get caught up on our timeline. 2005, so I would have been 25. All right, so you're you're well into adulthood, young adulthood, 2005. Mm -hmm. You're 25 years old. Okay, so what mm -hmm. happened uh, next after this? So so then again, I have a break for a little bit. I gotta think here for a second. Make sure everything here is in order. Okay, so now it's 2010, 2010, 2011. I'm like. 30-ish. It might have been 29, 28, maybe a couple years earlier. Yeah. Okay. So 2008, I would say. So I'm living with a different female, different house. Um, I'm maybe 15 minutes from their previous apartment. And uh, the first experience I had there, I come home from work one day. It's like 4 o'clock. Uh, I go up the stairs to the second floor. So at the top of the steps – there's a, a bedroom and then the hallway goes the other way and all the way down the hallway is another bedroom. So the, the bedrooms are facing each other. Mm -hmm. So I go on the top of the stairs right into that first bedroom. Uh, I just take my boots off. So I go out to go out of the room. I look down the hallway and there's a, a black figure standing next to my bed with both his arms reached out over my mattress mm -hmm. where I sleep. So I'm looking at this. I'm, I'm like, what the F? Like, it's been years since something happened. You know, I'm like, geez. And uh, it looks at me and, and gets, like, completely startled. Like, actually, like, kind of was shocked I seen it. Um, it. It looked like a shadow person, but it was very detailed. And, like, it looked really human. Like, I can see the outline of hair, outline of clothing, like, yeah. pants. Like, it looked like if you were just completely blacked out, you know, like right. the outline of detail, like it wasn't like fuzzy, like a usual shadow person. True. And it jumped away from the bed 
and just disappeared. I'm like, what the heck was that? And then I see it as a shadow now, actually on the wall as a shadow, running towards me on the wall as a shadow. Yeah. Screaming in this like uh had like a mechanical voice. Whoa. It was like oh, but it sounded really mechanical. Uh, how, so the best way to explain it is the movie The Matrix when Neo takes the pill and you know how the yeah. liquid metal goes down the throat? Exactly. Yeah. It was exactly like that. And it got louder as it came towards me. And and when it was running, you know, it wasn't like smooth run. It was very animated. So it would have one arm up and one arm down and then glide a couple feet and then switch this position and then glide some more. It was ridiculous. This is four o'clock in the afternoon. Like, like I literally just got home from work. I couldn't have been any more wide awake and sober than I was at that moment, you know? Right. And so it comes towards me. It turns that little corner and then goes down the stairs along the wall. And I went running out of my house after it, not chasing it, but just running out of the house to get out of the house. Yeah. And uh, when I ran out, my neighbor was, remember, was coming right across the street. He's like, what the heck's wrong with you, man? I was like, I see some crazy stuff. You know, and uh, that was a crazy experience. And also in that house, I had a sleep paralysis once. I didn't see anything. So it could have been regular sleep paralysis, but I can I tell you I was freaking out okay. <laughs> since the previous uh, incident when I had a soda can. And my eyes, I know they were just scanning the room, and uh, you know I didn't see nothing. Mm-hmm. And then also in that house, I, I heard a, a, a voice one time. Uh, me and my girlfriend, we had an argument, and I, I literally heard a voice like above me, like almost coming from a speaker above me, say, "Don't let her talk to you like that." Whoa! Like, shit. If, if, if if you can picture what you would think God talking to you from above would sound like, <laughs> that's the best way. I'm not saying it was him, but I'm saying like the idea of hearing that godly voice, like hearing a voice from above. Like I looked up at the ceiling when it was talking. And that was that was like twenty eight, twenty nine. Did then your moved, did your girlfriend I, hear? Did your girlfriend hear it as well? Was she in the room with you, or were you? You know, no, she wasn't there for any of that. But what's crazy oh, was okay. since I've been doing uh, this stuff on YouTube, I actually told her about what happened. I never talked to her about it before. Okay, and she told me that place was completely haunted. So at at the same time, we're both having experiences, different ones, but we're not talking to each other. Right. And that was frustrating when I heard that. I was like, we could have been, you know, because I guess she didn't want to tell me. I didn't want to tell her. So we're both going through stuff in the same house, but we're not communicating. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's crazy, man. I Yeah, that, that's a new story to me. Yeah, this shadow person thing. Very yeah, that, it, it, was, it was so clear. Like, I try to think of ways to debunk my experiences, man, but there's no way around at all what I saw. When it was now, over... Like, Good. When it was over the bed, did it look three dimensional? Because I know when it was yeah. on the wall, it was like a shadow. When, when it was it on the wall, it was shadow. Like you, it wasn't three, three dimensional. You know how like shadow people sometimes they're explained as being like kind of fuzzy or smoky. This was like a solid black. Okay. So I don't know if it was like a three dimensional, but it was a solid, solid black. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looked like a regular person was like in. <laughs> I can't. You know, if it looked like an actual shadow person that I've seen millions of times, it would explain that story better. The fact that it looked 100% human is, yeah. uh, and both arms were stretched out like Frankenstein right above the mattress, you know, and that was that place. <laughs> and then uh, this is when stuff started getting crazy is after this, like when I moved into an apartment by myself. Now, this is the first time I've is lived by myself. Is this the place myself. when I met you? Is this the same place or is no, it different? Okay. This is different. Yeah, this is different. This is an apartment. Uh, this is my first move to Philly. Was, I was 30. It was 2010, 2011. Okay. And uh, that's when I realized I had PTSD <laughs> when I was by myself. I never lived by myself. So being by myself, I didn't know how to react. And uh, I didn't sleep in that bedroom that whole year I lived there. Not once. It was wow. basically a closet. You know, I was just I, – if I never knew – I would feel that way because I was living with other people. I guess it made me more comfortable. But yeah. when I was by myself, man, I didn't whole year. I was renting an apartment, sleeping on the couch, you know, uh, locking all the doors, walking around with a knife in my hand, you know. 
Wow. You know, I, I I skipped this part, but uh, like when I was 21, the first thing I did was I bought a gun. I bought a handgun. Oh. And I was that paranoid, but I was scared. If let's say someone like barged in my room or something, I might, you know, right overreact. So I returned it like two months later. I haven't had one since because uh, I was that paranoid, man. I was ready to <laughs> go down and shoot him. Like I didn't. You know, it was, it was a crazy time. But, yeah, so I'm 30, and I'm just staying in my apartment. Like, I, I probably had so many jobs that year because I wasn't sleeping at night. I would wait till the sun comes up because I would, I would, I didn't want to sleep at nighttime. You know, it was that bad. I was just going through jobs because I would need, like, two weeks off at a time if it was bothering me a lot, you know. And uh, that's when I started looking for some type of help. Okay. So I, I contact Rufon. I didn't know anywhere else. I didn't know if there was anywhere else. You know, I did a lot of research and I kept coming up with uh, like abduction sites, but they're very religious. And I, oh. it, that, you know, it's okay it's for someone to believe that, but that wasn't. I didn't believe that was what I was dealing with. So eventually, I found Rufon. They uh, told me all they could do was give me a case number. Uh, they gave me a gentleman's name. And I, talk, I forget who he was. He talked. We talked once, and he gave me the contact to uh, Kathleen Martin. Uh, you know, the, the niece of Betty and Barney Hill. Oh wow! And, yeah. And we had a conversation, and she told me some things I didn't like to hear, but were the truth, which I didn't know at the time. Like, you know, at that point, I thought I was only taken one time, and she was telling me this happens probably almost weekly. You know. And I try to deny that, you know. So up to that point, I thought it was a one-time experience. It wasn't until later on that I had the idea it was happening very frequently. So that was a rough year. After that, things kind of uh, chilled out. So then I move again. I'm, I'm sharing a house with this guy. And uh, I'm in bed one night sleeping. And a drop of water hits me right here. In between my eyes. Oh no, I'm sorry. It was here, under my okay. nose, between my right. nose and my lip. Right. And uh, it, it it woke me up. You know, I wiped it off. It happened the next night again. Same spot right here. Ran down my face. The you no know, the 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 drop hitting me was waking me up. You know, people asked me if I thought my nose was running or something. You know, like that. I was like, there's no way. I felt you no know, drop hitting me. So night three, third night in a row happens again. So now I'm. I'm on a ladder with a flashlight looking all around the ceiling. You know, we both know you can tell a leaky ceiling pretty quickly just by looking at it. And I knew my ceiling was bone dry, but yeah. still I had to look. Sure. So I like, I'm done with this. I move my bed to the other side of the room and it happens again, two more nights in a row it hit me in the same spot. And that was it. That never, <laughs> never happened again. Just like everything else previous is like a one time thing. Right. You know, and then it was pretty chill. And then I moved into the apartment. <laughs> and that's when uh that's when stuff started getting a little wild. I'm sure I missed a couple of things in between, you know, sure. but uh they're like the major ones, you know. Right. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, a lot of those I hadn't heard before. That's crazy. Yeah. Last time we had you on it was just for an hour and we're already an hour and a half, but it's letting us just really let it breathe. We're really, really getting into uh letting the story breathe, giving it the time it needs. But yeah, man, those are some crazy stories. Okay. So so now we're at the place where, now is this the apartment where when yes, I met this you? Is, this is okay. the apartment, yeah. And this is in, uh, this is in Philly, right? Philly, yes. Northeast Philly. Philly. Okay. And how long have you been moved out of this place? I moved out of there in January. Okay. And how long did you live there previously? Two years. Okay. I moved okay. in right before uh, everybody had to stay inside which I was unaware of when I moved. It happened like two weeks after I moved in. So I moved into my uh, uh, apartment, which was pretty nice. And that was locked in there. <laughs> it was unexpected, yeah. but you know, that's how that, that whole thing started just being immediately locked in my new place, which I couldn't complain, I guess. I will say that is a really nice apartment. I know it sucks. Uh, the things that happened in there were weird, <laughs> but yeah. it was a, it was a nice apartment. Uh, here we have some, uh, some more, uh, comments to catch up on let's see so mr crowley continues and he says 
Sounds like MIB, but they usually don't travel alone. Uh, mm -hmm. I think he was talk talking about one of your previous experiences. Do you, yeah. do you believe, do you think there was any kind of Men in Black uh, stuff going on? Did you ever get that indication? At my apartment, I did. I actually have a video. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah. Unfortunately, no. I, I, I couldn't Yeah, really I, mean, I can't leave... Uh... No, anyone just subscribe to my YouTube. There's you don't have to subscribe. Just go there, look at the videos that are there. Um, right. Yeah, I have I'll a, put video a link of uh, what looks like they're looking in the window. Um, that's later down the road, though. But yeah, <laughs> definitely. So uh, um, so yeah, I, I I move into this apartment, man, and uh, this, everything was I had I didn't have anything happen for months in there, so uh -huh. I started getting the idea of doing an interview again i started getting into ufology ufo channels which i never really subbed to channels and stuff before till this time and i never even used to check who the content creators were i would just look for a video and watch it you know so i started getting into it and i finally did an interview on yeah. uh alien addict and this right. was the first time i shared my story and then after that happened it just like opened the floodgate pretty much and uh everything just started moving so fast at that point gotcha was this like about 2020 when it happened yeah it was like oh, the wow. end of the summer of 2020 gotcha you All know right. and uh yeah once that happened everything just just went, went i can't it just went crazy after that it's like a open a can of worms or something it was it was a, it was weird you know, and the uh, I gotta say, after I did an interview, I felt better. You know, I, I I don't know how to explain, but like I felt like a energy like kind of leave me. Like I felt lighter, or like relieved. Yeah. Like I felt like I like, you know, like, but like I physically felt like something exit me. Like I don't know if it was just the feeling of the fear leaving, or you know. Uh, it's hard to explain, you know. I don't. It's just a weird feeling. Like I just felt so much better, you know. Like I guess just it was a just like getting a it off my chest. You yeah, know? yeah. I, like a weight. He's the first the... person I ever talked to uh, in detail like that ever in my whole life, you know. Yeah. And, and once I did it, I regretted it immediately. Like I thought it was the worst idea until I saw some positive feedback in the live chat. To be honest. And I was like, okay. So I went on to do a couple more interviews, but during this time is when I started getting those marks on my body is right. after that first interview. Um, that's when all that started to begin. And uh, that kind of was a steady thing for a few months. Um, but yeah, so do you, you have those pictures still of those? Yeah, yeah. I'll get those uh, pictures. Let me uh, let's catch up on some comments if you don't mind, and then we'll go ahead sure. and uh, we'll show those pictures. So then, Mr. Crowley says, uh, "Remember, I discussed with you guys the vibrational patterns and waves, etc. Things almost being in tune with our dimension, just a bit off. Interesting. Yeah, I do remember that. So yeah, this is saying that a lot of the things you're observing or seeing, um, they could just be." Just a little bit, a little bit off. Not quite in our in our direction. Now, I want to address this vibrational thing because the vibration gets thrown around a lot. This term vibration, but I, I want to address that. So, so really, what's going on is that, like, uh, you know, you and I were made of, of atoms. You know, uh, lots of tiny little atoms. What's an atom? Well, an atom is basically the pre periodic table of elements. Okay, so that table has got all the atoms we know of on Earth. There's probably more we'll discover. But what is an atom? Oxygen is an atom, gold, copper, carbon, lithium, titanium. Okay, and so we're all made of these atoms. Mostly in our bodies is carbon. It's going to be stuff like carbon, oxygen, nitrogen. But um, those atoms are made of three different particles that are inside them, subatomic particles called a proton, an electron, and a neutron. Now, the thing is that these atoms, like I said, we're made of all these little atoms. They are moving. They're not still. They're always moving. They're moving very quickly. 
So a lot of times when people throw out the word like vibrational energy, I mean, we do vibrate. Vibration is a, a fast movement. So if, if you and I are made of little blocks and each of those blocks are moving, then yes, our whole body is moving. And so, so yeah, it's, is it possible to change these, these vibrational patterns? Yeah, it could be with some type of technology or spiritual technology. I mean, a lot of people talk about how uh, these grays or these aliens, whatever they are, they could phase through matter. So they could, they could go through a wall. They could go through your ceiling. They could take you through a ceiling. And I've just heard the idea thrown around that the way they're doing it is because they're, they're, they're getting you to vibrate. Like I said, those atoms in your body are vibrating. If they're getting them to vibrate faster or slower, I'm not sure how that would work. But yeah, I could see how you could pass through other solid objects if your vibrational energy were differently. Um, so I just wanted to address this idea. Let's see. Okay. Hold on a second. Uh, John, I can't hear you, but it, it may be because I messed something up. Hold on a second. No, I forgot I was muted. Oh, okay. Sorry. I was like, damn. I'm sorry. So what, what did you want to say? Oh, I was saying that I've felt intense vibrations before. Okay. This, this was one of the – I actually called somebody that I was so freaked out at this point. This, this happened later on and, you know, down the road, but I had a reading done by somebody, and she told me, like, you're about to be hit with some serious stuff that's about to go down in the next, you know, months or whatever. It happened that night, and oh. I had vibrations so bad that everything was, like, pulsing. My body was, like, I couldn't walk straight. I would have to, like, walk into a wall and kind of walk along the wall. And while these vibrations were happening, I just kept seeing eyes, black blobs with lots of eyes. Dude, I was scared. Just, I, mean, I felt, like, vibration. Like, I, I swore, like... I had a feeling like top of my head was on fire. Right. Like there was smoke billowing out of my head. I know there wasn't, but if that's what the top of my head felt like, I don't have no idea how to explain it. And it was everything. Like I was moving around. Everything's like, dude, it was weird. It's like almost like, tri like, like tripping almost like, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I felt. So his theory about the vibrational patterns and waves and stuff. I can definitely, I definitely see that. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I didn't know about that experience. That's crazy. Um, that was scary, man. When did that happen? That when you were vibrating, uh, having to hold this, onto the wall and seeing the eyes? This happened after I had a reading done. I believe that was the winter of 2020. Um, and I didn't believe in people doing readings, but a good friend of mine who I trust mm -hmm. suggested her to me. And I went in very skeptical and like, I, actually, I have that video on my channel as well. The whole, I recorded the whole thing. And within the first like three minutes, she had me, I was completely convinced. And, you know, there's another ex situation where something I don't believe in until it happens to me. And, you know, and used to bother me because I couldn't figure out how she does it. And I just stopped thinking about it because it's just way beyond what I can comprehend how that's even possible. But she was dead on with a lot of stuff. She told me stuff about my life I forgot. It's how, like, you know, where I lived as a kid, what my basement looked like as a kid, you know? So if anybody want to watch it, it's like a two-hour video, but the whole interview is on there. It's pretty good. I watch it often because, you know, that was a fun time back then. And you can watch that on your channel? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. What's the name of that video for people that want to watch it? I'm not sure. I mean, maybe it's uh, my reading or something like that. My, my channel is very unprofessional. It's, it's a complete mess. You know, I just use it to try to throw my footage out as fast as I can. There's no organization or rhyme or reason to what I do. <laughs> and, what, and, and how can people find it? What is it? Wreaking Havoc. I always forget the numbers at the end yeah, of it. Uh, Wreaking Havoc 215. Okay. It should be uh, in my name on the screen if you pull it up, I believe. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have most of my videos are up. I have a lot of videos that are private because at one point I just shut the whole thing down and you know, it kind of gave up. But I made public some of my better videos. I want to I want to get one of the videos that, that I'm in. I want to get it just because there's a section in there where I start joking about how handsome Bob Lazar is. 
Oh, I, I remember want, that, dude. That was hilarious. I just want to clip that because I think that's a funny joke. <laughs> that was, dude. That was so funny. Oh uh, yeah, I went so, off on <laughs> Bob Lazar on how handsome he is. Um, okay, <laughs> so Mr. Crowley says uh, demons are always the answer when the re religious evolve. Yeah, look, that's another good point. Look, yeah, but you know, I don't think that's wrong though because. You know, maybe demons is just their word for uh, aliens or for ultra terrestrials. You know, that's just what they call them. But it could be their experiences are true. You know, like, for instance, there's this whole study called demonology. People have written books about demons going back in history. And I don't think we should just throw all that stuff out. I think perhaps they're talking about real things, but they just they're just calling them demons. But perhaps the experience is real. Perhaps they talk about how to help yourself against them. And perhaps all that stuff is real. The only thing that isn't real is that, you know, perhaps they're not religious demons, but perhaps the experiences are real. I'm sorry. Were, were you going to say something? I was going to say, I, I believe I have a picture of a demon's face oh, in, my, in my apartment, you know, like, yeah. so I always had the idea, like, there's just two different words for the same thing. Right. That's what I was but, saying. Yeah. But I believe I have images of each, so I don't know how that works. <laughs> all right. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, uh, very well could be just strikes me as a generic answer like swamp gas. I think he's referring to perhaps maybe when I was talking about some medical things that could be causing. Uh, yeah. The, the other thing I would say is I, I would recommend you, you at least get a, a good, I mean, you maybe you already did this, but at least get a, a good physical with a doctor, just a general physical, just to make sure your blood levels are well. That That's just because you're, look, you're doing dangerous work. You know, like when I do dangerous work, sometimes I go in the mountains, I go to an areas that are very high altitude. There's a lot of sunlight. Uh, you know, I could get skin cancer. I could dehydrate. I could fall off a mountain. So because you're doing dangerous work, it you need to take care of your health because that'll help you do better work. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend, I mean, I don't know if you generally see a doctor. It's none of my business, but. I'm one of those people who never go to the doctor or hospital i just like walk everything off you know like i i can't even tell you last time i got a physical for work like a couple of years ago before that it might have been like 10 years i don't know like i know i should go i i, I have i want x-rays done on my back i want to like find stuff out i just don't go i just don't know why i i want to do it but it's something i, I just i want you to do it man like i said the yeah. only reason i want you to do it is because i want you to live a long and healthy life and the work you're doing, you, you're you going to do better work if you're healthy, whatever work yeah. you're doing, but especially this work. It's stressful work mm -hmm. and you're going to do better work if you're healthy. Um, yeah. So I'm definitely going to keep encouraging you to do that. Uh, Mr. Oh. Crowley's in Pittsburgh. Oh, look at awesome. that. Oh. Oh. Pennsylvania boys. Uh, <laughs> Betty says, very creepy video, the MIB one. Oh, yeah. Check out that Men in Black video mm -hmm. on Weekend's channel. <clears throat> yeah, Nancy video... Uh... Go ahead. That video concerned me. <laughs> uh, I joined a bit late, but I would like to see his videos. Can we get the name of his channel? Okay, yeah. Once again, it's Wreaking Havoc. And what are the numbers? I think they're right here. Hold on. 215. There he goes. Wreaking Havoc 215. I'll put a link to it in the description as well. But yeah, check I just out his put video. it in the live chat as well. Perfect. Like I said, all the, the titles and the, the thumbnails are, are a mess. There's no organization or rhyme and reason. You know, because I never planned on doing it this long. I didn't know what was going on. You know, I just thought I had a couple videos in the beginning. I mean, you should see my laptop. It's so unorganized. Nothing's labeled. Everything's in like 20 different folders. It's, I lost probably a quarter of my stuff. <laughs> so, oh, it's a mess. That's all right. It's all right, man. It's all right. Keep, keep yeah. moving forward. Keep moving forward. Yeah, I'm not trying uh, to be like an entertainer. I'm just trying to give you guys some stuff to look at. That's good. But Crowley says, sorry, I talked to much. No, Mr. Crowley, keep going. Oh, you, yeah. you have a lot of good input. He's a, Mr. Crowley's a very smart man, lovely man. Uh, John, do you ever do you ever have sleep paralysis? Now, I know you've said you had one sleep paralysis example, uh, but have you had more sleep paralysis? This is well, yeah, I had, I had two. I had the one with the soda can, and then I had the one in uh, 2010 in the house that had the shadow guy, and I heard the voice. You know, the, the house where I saw the shadow guy over my bed. Okay, I, had, we, I had a sleep paralysis there once. Okay, but it was, it was, but the time you saw him, you weren't having a sleep paralysis. That was like four o'clock and you were like awake. Oh, yeah, it just happened in that same house. Same house. So okay. I've only, it only happened twice. 
Okay, interesting. Yeah, well, I will say right now, I did an episode on alien abductions, and I did that episode of, like a few, like a week ago or something. But basically, look, there's this video, there's this woman, a psychiatrist from Harvard. Her name is Susan something. I'm so sorry, I forgot her name, but she spent five years studying alien abduction. And, you know, I, I go through her interview, her, uh, her presentation and her book and her research. I agree with a lot of the stuff she says, but I don't agree with a lot of the stuff she says. Basically, to summarize what she believes, she doesn't think there's any such thing as alien abduction. She thinks it's all caused by sleep paralysis, and she thinks it's all caused by uh, um, uh, hypnotic regression. But but you haven't had any regr uh, hypnotic regression. The, is that true? These All these memories, they don't come from hypnosis. They just come from your brain, right? I mean, it, it comes from me being awakened and seeing crazy stuff happening. You know, <laughs> uh, I never had uh, the hypnosis done. That's something I would like to do, though. You know, that's something I would like to do and actually document. I think that would be yeah. uh, a nice piece to the puzzle. I just well, I, can't find anybody. I, I would I would take a, a grain of salt with that, because one thing I do agree with this researcher is she doesn't think uh, sleep um, hypnosis is a good way to get memories. And the reason is, is because she says that you could you could mix up. A, a dream or a movie with reality and so you could falsely remember and i i do think that's reasonable i think because the way she describes the uh, hypnosis regression is that it, it puts your brain in a relaxed state which you know that's what it does i mean that's obvious right when you're hypnotized you're more relaxed and she says that relaxes your 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 reality constraints your filter and mm -hmm. so she oh. says she says sleep paralysis she says sleep is Hypnosis is good for like stopping smoking or helping you with your pain or losing weight, but she doesn't think it's a good way to get memories. So I, I don't know if that's true, but I would just be careful with that. Yeah. It was, is she, uh, was she an experiencer at all? Or no. This researcher? Yes. No, no. She just, just, see, she just, see, that's my thing. Like, how can she explain something that hasn't happened to her? You know? Sure. sure. That's my opinion. Like, you know, it sounds good. I'm sure it's a good theory and everything, but like, how can you explain something, something else if this never happened to you? You don't have the perspective of what it actually is, just what you hear from other people or what you think, you know? Well, yeah, I think she was very biased. Yeah, like I said, overall, I don't agree with your, um, with her ideas on, on alien abduction. But I do, like I said, I do, I am suspicious of sleep, uh, of hypnosis. I don't, I don't know if that's a great way of getting... Um, memories but maybe it is um but I, i'm just suspicious of it i am too uh, it's just i figure if i have the opportunity one day why not yeah yeah uh nancy says that sounds like a kundalini experience are you familiar with a kundalini experience not it's kind of like like an awakening of your body i'm not the best person to describe this but um but yeah <laughs> I, so maybe Nancy, if you could tell us more about what, what it is, I just don't want to give a definition because I'm not 100% uh, sure what the Kudalini experience is. Mr. Crowley says humans vibrate around 7.5 hertz. The earth is about 8 hertz. That's how we exist here. If your vibrational pattern was far off, how would you be able to interact? Okay, interesting. Yeah, well, that makes sense that a human would vibrate at a different frequency than a, the planet the planet is much more massive and the planet is made of different things than we are um but yeah if things were vibrating at a much different rate then yeah i could understand how that would be different how it would be difficult to interact and then iowak says uh you pass recognizable geometry relatively fast considering looking back it all happened in a flash i think this is part of a poem that iowak has shared before um yeah, it's a, it's a very good poem. And Mr. Iwak says, imagine the unimaginable. And here is Rekin's channel right here. Rekin Havoc 215. Check that out. Nancy says, okay, I found it. Thank you. Great. She found the channel. Awesome. And Mr. Crowley says, I had a, a new sleep paralysis experience recently. Unlike anything I've ever had before. They are usually all old hag or PTSD. This one was different. Uh, yeah, let's talk about sleep paralysis real fast. This is, is being brought up a lot. So what is sleep paralysis? It's basically a non-pathological condition. Non-pathological means it's not a disease. Anybody can experience this, experience sleep paralysis. 
what sleep paralysis is is a desynchronous de synchrony in sleep uh, patterns. A, a desynchrony means that two things are out of sync; they're not matched up. So what is happening is that your body is asleep, and when your body is asleep, you know you don't have control over it. That helps you, but your mind is awake. So that's why they're not synced up. Your mind wakes up, but your body doesn't. And when you experience sleep paralysis, you may feel a lot of weird things. I've had it uh, rarely, but I've had it. You may feel like you can't breathe. You might feel like something's on your chest. You might hear things outside the room. You might think things are around you. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of weird things happen. But, you know, I don't think sleep paralysis is an example for everything. But if you if if you have if you ever wake up and you feel like you can't move and you start panicking and you think something is in the room, I would first try to the first thing I would think is sleep paralysis before any paranormal things, because sleep mm -hmm. paralysis can be easily solved. Um, if it's usually caused by stress, um, you should see a sleep um, professional. Um, but that's uh, but I don't think sleep paralysis accounts for all of these strange experiences. But I do think you know. I wouldn't. Sh I wouldn't jump directly to paranormal things. I, I would. Sh I would first oh. think in sleep paralysis. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like the second time it happened to me, I didn't see nothing. I just couldn't move. You know, even though I was freaking out, I didn't see nothing. That could have been a regular sleep paralysis, but I believe the one with the soda can is something completely strange. So I think it's an example of each. Yeah, I, I want to say I wanted to say for that soda can thing. It reminded me of if you go to this channel on YouTube, it's called uh, Bob Gimlin. Bob Gimlin is one of the people who who is there when he shot the uh, Bigfoot Patty film, but th th it's not the same person. So this person mo mostly studies Bigfoot, but he mm -hmm. named his channel Bob Gimlin, G Y M L A N. Bob. He mostly talks about uh, UFOs and aliens, but he did one video where he talks about this family. They believe they have weird uh, alien experiences in their house. And one of the weird things that happened is that you should watch the video on the channel. But they walked in and they had this little – they walked into their kitchen and there was this little statue, like a little pyramid made of butter. But the butter was like flash dried. It was like all hot. And it just came out of nowhere. And they they later they got somebody to come in, like a, a reader or somebody. And they, that person said, I, I think this is extraterrestrial activity. But that just reminds me of that soda thing because I don't know why. Just like weird paranormal things, they love the kitchen. They love messing that, with the kitchen dude, and with food. That reminds me. For the last five or six years of living with my parents, they kept accusing me of throwing all the forks in the trash. Wow. I used to get screamed at all the time. You know, and I'm just telling them it's not, I'm not doing it. They're like, it has to be you. Why are you throwing all the forks away? So I didn't think much of it. When I lived at the apartment, though, dude, my forks were just disappearing. And I'm like, holy crap. And it, like, I connected it to, I'm like, I, I, I just begin to explain that situation. <laughs> like, was something stealing my forks? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that that happened to me. Speaking of the, the kitchen situation, yeah, that was right. That was weird. Yeah, overall, you know, you're being bombarded with all this weird stuff, and maybe that's on purpose. Maybe that's to confuse you, to keep you confused and disoriented. But later on, we're going to talk about some of your photographs and how we could narrow it down and try to get some answers because you're you're I, getting so much noise. I I believe it's the opposite of that. In my opinion, is that okay? It's almost like I'm being educated. And oh. prepared for the next experience and they're trying to like I, this is when i take everything that's happened to me i put it together in like one thought i think they're trying to they keep trying to prepare me for something bigger and i just keep checking it out and backing out and then they give me a break and they hit me again and stuff starts building up and building up and I keep going further and further and I get scared and I back off and it stops. And that's been repetitive through my whole life. Mm. So I think more than anything, they're trying to prepare me or educate me in a way. And it, to be honest, man, it sounds crazy coming out of my mouth while I'm saying it, but that's, that's what I think. If my look at everything as a whole, 
even though it sounds nuts, like I, I feel weird even saying it because I think it sounds nuts, but that's just how everything is coming together, you know? Well, I mean, I often think about how, look, I do think there are uh, different types of life that we interact with sometimes. And they're not life like we are. They're not animals. You know, they, they come from somewhere weird or they have weird properties and they're just very different than us. And so I think, how would they communicate with us? You know, it wouldn't be the normal ways that we communicate with animals or with other people. It would be very strange ways that they do it. And, um, yeah. And then the other thing is, like, sometimes I wonder if some of these non-humans are very intelligent or very advanced it almost feel like it almost feels like the same thing as like a mouse, like a little field mouse trying to understand a human, you know, like a little field mouse sees a human and he's like, I want to understand, like, why, what is he doing? Where does he live? What is it? It's so hard for that field mouse. It's almost impossible for that mouse to understand what a human mm -hmm. is doing, the history of humanity. Uh, sometimes I wonder if that's the same kind of, you know, the gulf. The, the the chasm between us and whatever these beings are it's it's very big yeah, yeah i'm sure um we have some more comments here to catch up on okay iowa says they can show any with tech too far i don't know if they make it back they can show any with tech too far interesting uh, mr crowley says I'm not done, <laughs> LOL. If you run two signals out of phase, everything, eventually they will interact. That's true. That makes sense. Signals and frequencies. Got it. And our frequencies. Uh, maybe some of us vibrate closer to another frequency of something else. That's why you experience things. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting hypothesis or explanation. Why is Rikin experiencing these things more than someone else? This could be a possible explanation. Perhaps you're running at a different frequency that's closer to them. Because that is a question. Have you wondered that? Why are you experiencing these things and other people don't? What is going on? Yeah, I, I have. <laughs> I wonder that a lot. You know, and it, it's different than most people that have experiences, I believe. Because, you know, I know people... I've talked to people, know people who see ghosts all the time, or I know people who think they're abducted all the time. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I know few people who are experiencing everything. Uh, I I find that uh, you know, I know a couple people like that. I'm sure there's a bunch out there, but I'm personally I only know a couple people like that who've had a uh, a little taste of everything, you know. So. I wonder if, you know, was I born this way? Was something done to me to make me this way? Um, it's weird. Um, could, could, could it have coincided with puberty? I mean, you were like 15. Were you well into puberty around that time? Yeah, well, when I was younger, like seven, seven or eight, I believe, in that age range, I kept having dreams of UFOs for a couple of years you know a reoccurring one the same one i never once thought about that until you know i was older like my 30s that i ever put that together with what happened you know so something could have been happening from that age i'm not sure but you know interesting observation uh betty says a forking the hell. Very funny. Very <laughs> you know, referring to all the forks in the garbage that uh, poor Rican was being blamed by. Uh, uh, Mr. Crowley says, or maybe that's why some are targeted by other species because we or they are running on a different frequency than the common people. Yeah, once again, that's a good hypothesis. That's why some people are targeted, perhaps. That's what I believe. Uh, well put, Mr. Crowley, uh, is what Betty says. We're getting some, uh, well, it's definitely a good idea, a good hypothesis. Yeah, definitely. And uh, John may be uh, onto an idea. Maybe they are trying to communicate, but we simply can't understand them and take it the wrong way or as a threatening thing. That's very interesting. So if you look at Skinwalker Ranch, um, Robert Bigelow and some other scientists 
they believe that the paranormal things in Skinwalker Ranch, they said they communicate through a series of games and signals. So they believe that this area in Utah called the Skinwalker Ranch, the Uinta Basin, this whole area is supposed to be haunted. Some of the scientists and the people who funded that project, that research project into the paranormal with scientists, they came to the conclusion that the paranormal, it communicates through games and signals. So it's kind of like, not it's not really direct it's not like a communication it's like they leave you a signal you're supposed to do something back and um then mr crowley is also saying right here that um you know perhaps when things are trying to communicate with us we take it the wrong way or is it threatening i definitely agree with that because i've had paranormal experiences and i freaked out and i i regret it i wish i would have been calm i wish i would have mm -hmm. engaged with it and so I always, I always suggest to people like, look, always be prepared for something weird to happen to you at any time, at any time when you're sleeping, you may be at work, you may be at the grocery store, expect, always be ready for something weird to happen and try really hard not to lose your cool. I know it's hard. I know it may be impossible, but try to keep your cool because it'll go better for you. I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, for me, like, I don't want to like, if, if somebody starts talking to me like a weird alien, I don't want to be scared. I want to be like, hey, what's going on? Sit down. Let's uh, want to be on my podcast. You know, let's talk about it. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. want to <laughs> It'd be different, though, if, if you got a heads up, like, hey, we'll be by here in 15 minutes, you know, and instead of all of a sudden in a blink of an eye, you're, you're in some deep stuff, like out of nowhere, unexplainable deep stuff, you know, like I wish they would call like, oh, we're on our way. Just be ready. We're coming, uh, you know. That is a nice courtesy. I wish they would afford us that yeah. courtesy. But Instead they, of like, you know, you just blink your eye and all of a sudden you're, you're in. Crazy. Yeah, you're, you're just all the way in. You can't, <laughs> you know, that I think that's like where most of the fear comes from because you're like, boom, like whatever you were doing before that or ever, however you felt before everything went down, uh, you're just like, you just drank like 20 Red Bulls, <laughs> you know, like at least for me, like every sense is on high alert just absorbing all information as possible and i'm just like in it <laughs> yeah there's no build up it's just like bam you're in you're deep you're, yeah, yeah. you're in 50 foot water yeah uh try not to drown um uh mr crowley's thanking uh betty uh he says i run deep in this and then iowa walk says whoops they could always be jumpsuits from the pyramids. Interesting. They could always be jumpsuits. And then Mr. Crowley says, I know John has seen me on panels, so he should understand I am always objective about things. That's a good way to be. Betty says, oh, yes. indeed. Indeed. And Mr. Crowley says, I don't buy into anything, but I give it a chance and try to think about it. Yeah, me too. You know, I don't dismiss anything. I don't believe anything offhand. Uh, but when people tell me stories, I think they're honest. That's what I do believe. I'm like, yeah, I think you're being honest. Um, okay, so now let's put up the pictures, if you want to, of your uh, your injuries. That's what's okay. next. If that sounds good. Yeah. So okay. So. Uh, let's go ahead and oh, saw that one already. This is the burn mark you received. Okay, and here's uh, the first one. So yeah, I woke up one morning with these marks on my knee. You know, it really doesn't look like much right there, but in the next couple of pictures, I have a close-up of it. And this is a mark on my elbow the same morning, in which I still have a scar to this day on my elbow. And, like, the, it's like the top layer of skin was, like, kind of removed off that because there's, like, an indentation. But here's a close-up of the marks that were on my knee. You know, just like all the other marks, a lot of people assume that they were... Uh, bed bugs or some type of someone claimed that had to have been me scratching myself but these holes were almost down to the bone these holes were deep um these hurt so bad that i couldn't wear shorts or pants i was like walking around in boxers because nothing could touch this this whole area burned like hell Damn. and uh i had a problem walking i didn't i couldn't even shower for a couple of days because the water touched it which just burned so bad you know, and to this day, I still have discoloring in that area from those marks. But the one picture you showed where I had the marks highlighted, you know, yeah. I just wanted to show that a lot of I realized after the fact that a lot of these were paired up. Oh, you okay. Know, how I highlighted them. They're like in pairs. That's how I interpreted it. You know, that could be not the case, but that's what I see. And that's why I highlighted it, you know. 
That's interesting. Yeah, they're definitely weird marks. Yeah. Okay. So we have another one. This is something I woke up with one morning at the apartment. I thought it was strange, so I just took a picture. It doesn't look like much, but earlier that day, it transitioned to the next picture. Okay. So you can see now there's like this weird bruising going on. It almost looks like the number three. And this was a few hours after the last picture. And this is when I knew something was weird. So now the next picture is the same mark, but late that night. It ended up forming a circle of a bruise around that white area in the middle was where the first picture was. And somehow that bruise like kind of formed around, which was completely strange. Mm, because in the first picture, there's no bruise there. It barely looks like a mark. And I don't know how it... And then like the second picture too, how it's like shaped as number three, like the bruise is moving around. It's totally weird. Like you see how that shaped? It's, it's so strange. Yeah. The, the one thing I'll say here, some people have some questions we hear real fast. Let's put them real fast. Um... Mr. Crowley just says, I have psoriasis on my knees and elbows. Just a thought. Might get bad at times when I mess with it. And uh, Scotty B says chemical burns, maybe. And then oh. I will and I will say this one just kind of this one right here with the, the circle. I'm not saying this, this is what it is. I'm just saying I'm not sure if you've ever seen a tick bite. But when a tick bites you, it forms this kind of uh, target, the circle with a little target oh. in the middle. Uh you know, we're not saying that this is what's causing it. These are just some similarities to uh, some other oh, injuries. Yeah. I, knew, I never knew that. That's interesting. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, I just look up weird because the picture before this, the bruise is not in the shape of a circle. It actually goes up my leg. Like, you see how it goes up to my kneecap? Yeah, yeah. So it looks like, why would it be shaped like that and then form into a circle? That's what gets me. It's not like there was the marks in the middle, then there was a circle bruise. I would understand that. But it's it's like twice the size it's like i said it looks like a shape of a number three to me and then somehow that shape uh changed into a circle right ayahuasca says a shadow that moves in your body that's an interesting way of describing a so, bruise yeah. so that weird bruise in the previous yeah. picture formed a circle and all those transitions happened in one day from the morning until night interesting definitely check out that tick thing maybe i'm wrong but yeah when you have time mm -hmm. just look up tick bite and yeah, definitely. Uh, if anything, it's just a similarity. If anything, I've heard so many wild uh, theories on this. Like, I have skin disease, <laughs> like uh, skin disease, bed bugs. I I do it to myself. Uh, all types of stuff, you know. Yeah, all these people are yeah. trying to be dermatologists, but really, we're, none of us. You know, are <laughs> if if I look up tick bites and it looks identical to that, and you know, I would be just as happy. As, you know, I have no problem debunking my own stuff. That's for sure. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can move on to, I think there's some more pictures with, let mm -hmm. me see if that's all the body. Oh, here's another one. Here's uh, another, I wake up uh, one morning and I have these will look like L shaped triangle shaped patterns. I don't know if you're able to zoom in or not, but you can see that some of these holes are actually pairs of holes, like two holes, two tiny holes next to each other. Mm. Um, I don't. I don't think I'm able to zoom in, but no uh, so you know, there's also people have theories these are bug bites or, or bed bugs, but I, you know, I, I never seen bugs bite people like, you know, with 90 degree angles, <laughs> like you know, symmetrical patterns or whatever. But do I know what this is for sure? No. But when I went to bed the night before, no, this was there. Uh, here's a um, uh, finger. This. Yeah, this is a, a substance I woke up with one morning. It was this. This was going on for a week. I, I was waking up with two different substances on that same finger. Um, I think there's another picture right here. Yeah. Yeah. So this this is day four of this happening to me. I kept wiping it off when I woke up. It, it was like I would like wake up and I'd be like my instant reaction. I, I'm so upset with myself that I didn't save this material. But what was happening was I was waking up and there'd be like a green gelatin like ball yeah. towards the tip of my finger. And this greasy material you see here would be down the whole entire finger. Like it was like 
like this that grease ran all the way to the tip and there'd be like a green ball there and the ball was like inside this material as well this was the fourth day it happened this was all that was on my finger for the fourth day i don't have a picture of the one that has like that you know green ball at the tip for for some reason i woke up and like when i saw it i was getting ready for work i just, I just wiped it off like I, I did not think about taking pictures or or uh saving it but this happened for like a week and it never happened again uh, Interesting. You know, some people wondered if something spilled on my fingers or anything like that and i i really i try to figure out what this stuff could be but it was just a strange situation where for a week's time i was waking up with stuff on my finger and then uh betty says um more like biopsy wounds i've had biopsies it looks very similar and yeah. Mr. Crowley says, uh, laugh out loud, you're killing me. I have to work in the morning. <laughs> you could always catch up tomorrow, buddy. I don't want to, I don't want you to lose your job. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the biopsy thing, yeah. The, the, I think she's yeah. referring to these uh, puncture wounds, right? Yeah. I've yeah. heard a lot of people uh, say that. People that have actually had the biopsy uh, wounds themselves say that's what they look like. And dude, those were deep, man. Like, those were pretty deep. Like, my, I could, like, barely walk. It was it, for like a week. You know, it, even if I wore shorts, I would have to hold them above my knee when I walked around. I couldn't let them touch at all. Right. Uh, yeah, that's very odd. Yeah. I, I, then, dude, a lot of people thought that could be a, like Crowley's saying, a skin condition or bed bugs. But that happened one time. And I, I don't know. It's. If if this was something that was a one time picture and I had another no other stuff was going on, you know, right? I would I would lean towards some of these ideas and theories of like skin conditions or bugs, but when you add it to everything else, it's it's hard for me to be convinced of that, you know. Yeah, and I just it's like I don't know. I just I just find find it hard to believe that a bug bugs can do this or it's a skin condition I have because these, all these pictures are like one offs. Like that's the only time that's happened like that. But you know, it, it could be a skin condition. I really don't know, but I'm just telling you guys what I think. You know, I can't say anything definitely. Yeah. We're just sharing, just sharing these pictures and uh, sharing yeah, the story. Yeah, I have no problem. People sharing their theories and stuff too. You know, I, I could be wrong with some of this stuff, but you know, the, the when it's in the, when it's put together with everything else, it makes it more compelling than it would be if it was just an individual incident. Exactly. And like like I said, this probably this could be nothing, but it looks pretty suspicious to me because there's three big holes and at the top there's two tiny ones next to each other. That looks suspicious to me. You know. It definitely. And I think we got some more here. Here's another one. Uh yeah. four four little marks. Yep. And this, I noticed this when I got out of the shower, my, my legs wet. I just looked down. I was just like, no way. That's uh, interesting. Uh, interesting. Okay, now right, we're so, getting into some. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm going to jump a little bit before this picture. So all these, I'm getting all these marks on my body. I'm doing yeah. interviews. You know, I'm trying to share my stuff. And uh, so somebody suggests on a show in the live chat, I get a security camera because they want to see if I can uh, record an abduction taking place. And this was something I was terribly scared to do, but I bought the camera and that was my goal. It was positioned on me to sleep. And uh, I was, when I bought the camera, I knew within a week I would capture something. I, it was like the strongest feeling. Like I just hundred percent knew like this, this, this is what I was supposed to be doing. So I never got a, a alien abduction on camera, but in a week is when I got my first orb on camera and I saw that for the first time. Right. And before that, I didn't know anything about orbs. I wasn't into them. I didn't know nothing about them. Uh, and to be honest, I never have done even any, any research on them <laughs> pretty much. So I was oblivious to it. So these orbs being recorded was an accident. I wasn't anticipating for this whatsoever. And uh, one night I had recorded one orb and I knew it was something strange. I knew it wasn't a piece of dust 
because this orb like came from under my couch, like swooped down under my coffee table and went straight up. And uh, it was just one in the video, but I, I seen it. And I, I was at a, a friend's house and they, they fell asleep and I was up and I actually seen it happen live. And when I went home the next day, I was like scared to walk in my apartment because I was like, didn't know what the heck that was. So I started to change the positioning of my camera because now I'm trying to focus on these orbs. So the next day I get a couple on a video. The day after that, you know, I get like maybe a dozen and then about a week or two in, it's pretty active. And that's when I started finding images like the picture you just had up in the apartment of the bean. Right. I can put that up um, if you want. Uh, here we go. Next one, guys. So this right here is a screenshot. Uh, to, what I, to me, what looks like an uh, alien. Now, what happened was in the video is there was an orb flying through, you know, through my living room. And there's me kind of outlining it. So this is actually one uh, a screenshot of one frame of a video of an orb flying by. And for that one, that one frame, the orb changed into this. And then the next frame, it went back to an orb and kept continuing, you know, through the video. It went by very quick, probably like maybe a second. Um, so I, I saw this in the video live. It caught my eye. And that's when I started to slow everything down and, and you know, watch every frame. And I started finding stuff like this uh, in the videos. So Here's another one. Here's, so, uh, you know, I've heard uh, people suggest this could be like a pareidolia or it could be uh, something with the camera or light reflection, all kinds of stuff, which, you know, I can admit some of that can be possibilities, but I, I kind of believe that it's not <laughs> personally. You know, even this looks pixelated. I mean, to me, that's, I know it's a pixelated figure. That looks pretty clear to me of something's there. You know, and this is the same thing. The orb is just flying by in a second. And I had to actually pause it on one frame. And this is the image that it shows. Um, the, this, this, uh, this is kind of geared me into the just direction of now trying to figure out what these orbs are. I'm like, they're actually changing into something. This is a good example. That looks like an alien to me, right? Right. But it's not like clear. I, I can see how it could look like one, but I can also can see how that could be nothing, you know? <laughs> but it's, you know, this one's a little iffy to me, but, so, and this is the face I was telling you about, the, uh, the demon face. I don't know if you guys can see. It's on the right side of the circle to the right of the lamp. There's, if you see the two eyes, and there's a horn and a nose and a chin. Uh, are you able to see that, Wild Trees? Uh, yeah, I think I might have zoomed in on some of these. I zoomed in a little bit. Let me see. Let me go forward well, to see you. The, the next picture is actually I should be one that I zoomed in myself. No, did I not send you that one? Uh, you might have. So I think some of them may have gotten a little bit out of order, but um, that's all right. Yeah. But I, I do have a picture of this zoomed in, and uh, it's, you know, if you want, I can just send it to you real quick. So um, I'd like, I'd like you yeah. to see that. Okay. Uh, let me see. You want me to see if I have it uh, in the slides? I could go through them real fast. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me just go through them real fast to see if they're there. Like I said, it might be out of order. Just let me know if you see it, and then we'll we'll go back to all these. Uh huh. Oh, it might not. I don't think I sent it to you. Okay. I don't even have my hard drive in to actually send it. That's yeah. okay. But, uh, yeah, I don't think I sent it. We'll go back. Well, you got some really good ones here as well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So we'll go back to where we were here. Uh, let's see. We'll and also, back. too, if anyone wants any of this footage to look over themselves, you can just let me know. I have no problem. If you want to, because sometimes it's better to look on your own. You know, sure. so if anyone's interested, you can always let me know. But yeah, that's a 
creepy face right there. I almost moved out because of this picture. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And like when you look at these two, uh, when you zoom in, you can actually see shadow and, and like depth of the eye sockets. One thing that's common in every, not every picture, but I would say 95% of the faces you see, uh -huh. there's no eyes. There's always just the eye sockets. And you can see the shadow and in depth of the eye sockets, you know. And then yeah, Crowley, you know, I'm just answering Crowley's question real quick. Okay. Some of this stuff could be pareidolia, but some of this stuff's not. Uh, you know, I just showing you guys what I see. You know, I, I could be wrong, man, but like I said, when all this stuff's put together, I don't think pareidolia is uh I don't know, a good a good uh answer for everything. It might be a good answer for a few photos. You know, I can well, definitely admit that. Well, I guess at this point, I'll, I'll talk about it, how to analyze uh, this type of information because th this is this is data, this is information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nancy says that one's too far away. Yeah, that one's a little far away. We'll see some better ones, I think. In the uh, let's see. Um, and then Iowax says, "Drowning in all my regrets, all just the same in the end, over and over again. All that we do is pretend." Iowax is a very a very good poet. Um, so what I was going to say about, uh, these photographs is that, yeah, look, these are all data, these, these photographs and the ones we're going to see later. Um, you know, the thing that really interested me is the, the orb pictures. Okay. So, or video, if you look on his channel, you'll see these videos. And if you buy your own infrared camera, perhaps you'll see basically a little, if you put up the infrared camera, like I said, the infrared camera, the way it works is that that camera will shoot out it's got an emitter it's got an emitter and it shoots out infrared beams and those beams will bounce back so then it's a black and white image so then if you see uh wreaking havoc's john's or videos you see all these little circles just flying in crazy directions all of them now that's to me that's fascinating to me because the the, the motion looks organic it looks like an insect or something alive and if you look at most skeptics and um, they'll say, well, that's just dust in the air. And there's because it's true. There's always dust in the air. and It's always being um, you, you don't usually see it unless the sunlight is shining on it. But what people will say is that, well, this is dust in the air, which is always there. And the infrared beams are just bouncing off it. That's all there is to it. Now, I think, yeah, of course, that happens sometimes. But my question is, like, I don't think anybody's ever done the research to see, is it really that? Because could some of it be just dust? Is it all dust? I mean, some of it could be like, I don't know, some kind of new insect that's like super tiny we haven't discovered, or it could be something paranormal. I don't know. So mm -hmm. that's that, that that's a really good opportunity to, to do an experiment. So, you know, some easy things people could do is like uh, run a filter to get rid of all the dust and then shoot the video another thing is you could get a fan a strong fan and run the fan and if it is dust then it should just react to it so to me that's um that's that that type of information and that type of video is very it's it is very easy for you to do a scientific experiment and so i'll give once again if you want to study something scientifically you, you need two things and you need to have repeatability so whatever results you have you have to be able to repeat them over and over again. So with the dust, you know, the the or the orbs, let's call them orbs because we're not sure what they are. You could get repeatability because you, you're consistently getting orbs on video. Then that's repeatability. You, 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 you're repeating your results. And then when you run the experiments, you could against re repeat them. Now, mm -hmm. but the other thing you need for it to be scientific is you need falsifiability. So you need the, the ability to prove something wrong. So with the orbs, you have falsifiability as well because you have the ability to show that it is that it, it is just dust because you could run the filters, you could do all kinds of things. So there, so the orbs have the ability to to pass a scientific method because mm -hmm. you could have repeatability and you could have falsifiability. There's ways of showing that it's not something paranormal, that it is just dust. And I'm not saying it is just us. I'm saying it meets those two criteria. So to mm -hmm. me, that that's very that the orbs are really good. Now, the faces. Let's talk about the faces. Now, the faces are not as easy as the orbs. So once again, let's let's look at the criteria. Okay, 
the first thing you would need for the faces, like I said, you would need to have repeatability. So you would have to consistently get faces. Um, but I think you'd have to maybe get the same type of face. I don't know if you could if you keep getting different faces. I'm not sure if that would pass repeatability. I have a good example that we'll see later of the same face, but one's looking straight at the camera, and the other one, the other screenshot, is it looking like to the side, like the head actually turned that we'll get into later. But uh, actually I said, I found that picture of the zoomed okay. in face and I sent it to you on messenger. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to share that so that people. Uh, can see. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead? Uh, I'm going to get that up. Well, why don't you just talk about some of the, the pictures um, while I, I get that pic while I get that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause uh, so I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to pull yeah. something up here. Tell me which picture you want to talk about. And then you want to talk it's about the, this. It's the very last one I sent you in messenger. I just okay. sent it right now. No, I, I know, but like in the meantime, while I get that pulled oh, up, do you, do you want uh, to talk about one of this? You can back up. I think. Yeah. Uh, next one. Okay, this is a good way to start. Okay, so, so let me. Uh, I'm, I'll work on it, but what you could go ahead and talk about this one. Okay. Okay. So this this is a, a zoomed in picture of an orb that was flying through a video from top to bottom. Um, in the actual video, it's kind of tiny, but I, I noticed like a face even though it was you know, pretty small. So I zoomed all the way in. And in this image, this is probably one of my favorite pictures because I see anywhere from six to eight faces inside of this. Um, the next picture, I actually circled some of the faces I've seen you know, picked out individually. So if you look inside these blue circles, you know, what I can what I can tell it looks like to me is there's multiple faces in this orb. Um, this picture always blows my mind. There's a couple that I have with filters that even bring it out more. Like this face on the bottom, how it's like kind of looking down to the left. And then you got the face above it. You can, it looks like it has like a mustache. You see the nose and eyes. And then, you know, just faces. There's some faces in here I didn't circle. Um, I think this is a pretty cool picture. This one actually blew me away when I seen this. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm but, looking at yeah. the photo you, I'm looking at the photo you sent me. I, it kind of, it looks, it, I, I don't know if it's the same one, but let me go ahead and put it up. It should be uh, the same one, but zoomed in. It should be more zoomed in. Okay, so let me go ahead and try to get it up. One second. It's to tough with some of the stuff because if you zoom in too much, it kind of distorts it a little bit. So you kind of got to get it at the yeah the right spot. But that uh, was a, that that face too. That was also an orb. You know, it, it flew from the ground. It went right up that wall, and for that one frame. It made that face and then continued back onto an orb and took off. Uh -huh. Let me see. Try to do this. I think I might have to. Uh, let's see. And you know what? What's really what's cool about some of this stuff is, I've had people point stuff out in some of these pictures that I never seen. Like I've had people see stuff that I didn't see, and you know, that, I think that's pretty cool when that happens. Because I'm I'm there studying the hell out of these things, and uh, you know, it still slips by me some of the stuff. For sure. Okay, I think I might have to share the screen. Let me see if this works. Okay, okay so let me go to uh, da, 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 share uh, share screen. Share screen. Okay. Share. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay. All right. Okay. Looking into the abyss. Okay, now I'm going to put the picture up. Let me know. Is the picture up on the screen? Yes. Yeah, that's the one. It's zoomed in. Okay. So I can go a little bit further. 
it's that- on the right side inside the circle those two oh. black you yeah. see the eyes and you, you yeah. see like the hook chin and the nose you can almost see a frown in the face and the horn yeah. up top on top of the head right here yeah yeah that's creepy man <laughs> yeah great all right you can know it almost has like a frown uh, that's how that's a good right there how zoomed in looks pretty good i can see it pretty clear yeah it's a uh, creepy but see what's creepy about this one is i never noticed the horn on top of the head Mm-hmm. I only saw it as like I thought it was like a human face. Someone pointed out like a year later they saw that horn and now I can't unsee it. And it's crazy as much as I looked at this picture. I never looked at it that way. So having someone else's perspective is always nice. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go back to normal. Okay. Okay, let me see. Stop sharing this. And back. Okay, cool. That worked out good. Cool. And I didn't. Sh- I don't think I, sh- I shared anything embarrassing either. None of my dinosaur fan fiction. Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my naked dinosaurs. All dinosaurs are naked. Gotcha. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay. So yeah, we can go back to uh, where we were here if you want to go back. To- yeah. So there's yeah, those are the faces I have circled. There's more in there. Uh, I I mean, just looking at it from here, I can see two or three more. But th- this is what really started messing with my head's like okay I, I see five faces in this orb so all those five finger faces or whatever they have to be traveling together right if they're inside the same orb and that i started thinking how that's even possible uh interesting and then i was wondering if they're even ghosts at all like that's when i started getting the idea that orbs are forms of transportation for various things and I only say that because I have pictures of various things inside these orbs, you know. Definitely. So I wonder if it's a way to they get around like an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds weird, but like I just, you know, I, I try to stick to my own evidence and footage to come to my conclusions. Um, and that's kind of what I'm leaning towards just from what I've recorded. Interesting. Um, I also want to say I'm not sure if Nancy's still here, but Nancy had to go to sleep. Sweet dreams, Nancy. Yeah. Thank See you for Nancy. being here. <laughs> okay, here's another photograph. Yeah. And, and here's a good example of something that could be pareidolia. You know? That's, that's an, that's an it's orb. A, that's... It's a zoomed in orb, yes. Like, I, I believe that's an orb, but the face is not as clear as most. But to me, it looks pretty clear. Cool. You can move you know. on if you want to. So now this is that same orb. But what happened was it would rotate, and when it would rotate, you would see a different face kind of. And uh, this is a face I think is more prominent that everybody, I think, could see a little more, more clearly. Right. Yeah, so, so yeah, like I, said, like I was saying, so to, 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 to analyze the faces, okay, uh, just to give you the, the scientific uh, how I would recommend you go about, okay. So look, the faces are going to be, I don't want to say they're going to be more difficult, but let me just tell you what, you, what you're what you going to need to do. Like I said, the orbs work really well in themselves because they're obviously visible. You could repeatedly, once again, you need repeatability, you repeatedly get them and you could run different types of experiments to see if they're actually orbs or not, which is falsifiability, mm-hmm. uh, the ability to prove something uh, not correct, um, um, false. Now, with the faces, like I said, the number one thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get that repeatability. So to me, I don't, I'm not sure if it's enough to get different faces. So I'm not sure that's, that's enough repeatability. You might have to get, if you want to use this, analyze this scientifically, you're going to have to get the same face uh, over and over again to have repeatability. Well, uh, that's happened a couple of times, but not often. Usually it's they're one and done. I mean – they'll be similar you know i've seen stuff that's similarly shaped but not identical but there is a couple faces that are definitely repeaters in the same video and and it's also possible to um use software to analyze the uh, there's some software it's usually used for like insects or for like different parts of animals and biology but there is software you could do that you give it an image like a face like this and it'll pinpoint different points on it and it'll it'll like identify it as it's uh, as a unique thing, so then you could have that as data that faces data, and then you could see if you see it again. Um, but yeah, 
Yeah. So, so those are the things I would do. I would number one, I because I think it is possible to start analyzing these faces. Uh, like I said, I would start with the orbs because they are easier. But uh, uh, the faces are doable. Like I said, number one, you have to have repeatability. So I think I would suggest you try to get the same face multiple times. Then you have repeatability, and then the falsifiability. Well, that's that's the same thing as the orbs. Since they're since they are appearing on, since the faces are appearing in an orb you would want to run an experiment to make sure that the orb is not just dust or insects. And like I said, we've already outlined how you could do that. You could run a filter. You could run a large fan. You know, if that fan is running, then, and it is dust, then it should react to the fan. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, those are the two things you would need to do in order to analyze the faces. I, you have to I'd also uh, like to mention, I believe from this point on, there's a filter in the room. Okay. Because remember, we set up that filter. So somewhere around yeah. this time, there's a HEPA filter in there. Good, and, good. Uh, you know. Okay. Would you like we'll, to move we'll, on? We'll finish it. We'll finish that one day, man. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you're ready, buddy. Talk about that later. Yeah. But... Um, so yeah, we can continue. Okay. So this is a good one that, um, which to me looks like a, a female's face looking to the right. Now, this right. is another one where I could say it could be pareidolia or something else as well. But I, I just think it like the more evidence I collected, the more uh how can I say it, more compelling the some of my lesser evidence was. Sure. So that this isn't like the clearest picture, but I see a female face and it makes it more compelling because of all the other faces I captured before this. So, um, you no, know, to me, it looks what I think it looks like, but I, you know, it, it, I could be wrong on this one too, but it's still, it's interesting. And this wasn't even like an orb. This was like a face just going across the camera. Interesting. And I believe that little one, that little blotch, like on the right hand side, I believe yeah. that's the reflection on my wall because they, they travel parallel. That's just a, an idea that could be a totally separate one because sometimes they go together like parallel, go around together. But I believe that could be a reflection, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Interesting. Okay. Would so this I is the big, this is the beginning of where I started seeing like actual human faces. This is a new phenomenon at this point. You know, okay. as you, if, uh, here's, here's a good one. Yeah. So this is two pictures spliced together. Okay. So the picture on the left, if you look all the way to a left, you see like what looks like an alien face with an elongated skull, right? Right. So if you look to the right of that black chair, there's that same face, but it's looking in another direction. Now, this is two screenshots from the same video uh, spliced together in one photo. And these images, I believe, appeared, I want to say, a minute apart in the video from each other. But it's the same face, but in two different positions. I think this is a very compelling video uh, picture of this. And I think you have the same face looking in two different angles. I'm, I wonder if you highlighted that. Let me see. Let me go forward real fast. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Here's one of them. Yeah. There's one. Yeah. To get an idea what I what I see. We could go back to this one. Okay. See it without the highlighting, and then we see it with the highlighting. Okay. And then I think you might highlight the other one. Yep. And the other things I circled, I believe, are something like on the monitor, I kind of see a face. And then the top circle, I kind of see half a face. Nothing clear is the one below, but I think that's a pretty. And then you can see right there to the right of the camera is the HEPA filter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the blood right, black. right there next to. Uh, and these were orbs as well. These were orbs just flying through. And for one frame of the video, this is what I see. Did you notice your air is cleaner with the filter? Like, do you breathe easier or does it smell better? Or did you notice anything with the filter? <laughs> Not really, no. But it was a nice feeling that I was running filter in the air all the time, you know? Yeah. Uh, I want to buy a filter. Um, yeah, the, yeah. The, the filters, the replacement filters are kind of expensive, but they last a while. But I was changing mine and cleaning mine way more than I was supposed to, you know? That's good. All right. Do you want to move on to the next one? Yeah. Okay. This is something I don't know what it is. I don't even know what it really looks like. Kind of <laughs> like a face, maybe, but uh, 
it was just flying by. I zoomed in, it looked interesting. This is an orb, but you know, it kind of looks like a face looking to the right. Yeah, it'd be interesting if we if we got um, uh, you know, the higher quality infrared cameras we got, I think we'd get better data, better, more clearer data. The, the higher up we went. Yeah, I, definitely. This is a, a a very good one. Uh, this is one of my better ones as well. So on the bottom circle, you can there's a looks like a being to the left of the plant. I believe that's absolutely paranormal. I don't think that could be paradoia at all. That's very clear to me. And the circle on the top is what I believe to look like a type of face, maybe a reptilian face. I'm very iffy on how I feel about that. That's what it looks like to me, but I'm more concerned about the figure and the circle on the bottom because it has a clear face with the mouth and nose and the eyes, chin, shoulders. Uh, can you see that face uh, clear wild trees? Uh, uh, I, I my, unfortunately my 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 computer screen is so small I would have to see it up close. But uh, maybe later when I get it on my big screen. But yeah, I can see the top one. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the bottom one looks looks human, like. Okay. And that's the only time I've seen a figure like that. But to me, that's an undeniable picture. That's pretty clear. That's the clearest face. And that that also was an orb, and like the orb went across the room from right to left. It went behind the plant. It showed itself for one frame as that, you know, being, and then it broke off into three different orbs and went off in different directions. Like the orb went flying by, turned into the figure, then exploded into different orbs going in different directions. I unfortunately lost this video. Um, my computer got hacked, I think, at one point. It had uh, so many problems. I lost a bunch of files and had to totally reset it. So I, I lost a lot of stuff. I think I lost the video to this, but the video was cool. Interesting. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Here's a zoomed in. Yeah. So this, to me, looks like an image we're going to see later on as a face looking down to the right. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I, that, that one I definitely see, yeah. Okay. Here's a really zoomed in a picture of an orb. Um, this green box is actually the motion sensor for my camera. So this is showing that the camera is picking up motion is tracking it and this believes is a looks like a face looking down to the left um this oh yeah is pretty, this the is next pretty one. clear yeah this yeah, next one when you highlight it is yes that was, so was, this yeah. is this is what i'm seeing interesting almost like thanos from uh, the avengers like a side profile <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks yeah. like man <laughs> <laughs> but like I, I, I looked at this stuff for so long that I can see these faces now without even being zoomed in. Like I, I can catch it even when it's on video. Like I knew to pause this. I knew something was there. I zoom in and there's a face. The, to me, this one's also one that's very clear. Right. I mean, you can even see the scrunched up nose and the lips and, and everything on this one. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, that one was very interesting. Okay, and this another. one's an, this one's a little iffy to me, uh, but when I look at this, you see it when I circle it in blue, it looks like a face looking at me. Right, and th this is actually uh, an orb flying by, but it left like a long trail. And sometimes in these trails, there might be a couple faces in the trails, and this to me looks like um, a face. Looks pretty clear to me. Yeah, I can see that one for sure. Okay, so I think you have to go forward a little bit. I think these might be backwards. Yeah, okay. One more. All right, sorry about that. So yeah, this is this is so this this video, well this picture was taken from a video I took uh Christmas I think 2020, I believe, or 2020, I think 2020 Christmas. Christmas morning. I woke up and I decided to stick my camera out the window. And this video is, is one of the most amazing videos I have for sure. But in this screenshot, you see a beam coming down and you see like a little 
a little figure by the the van. So if you can now go backwards, it will okay. zoom in to show what I'm seeing. Oh, okay. So here's a closer look. And oh yeah. To me, it looks like an alien head down there. I I can't, you know, obviously I can't say for sure, but the coincidence of seeing that head, what looks like a head in that beam of light, um, I, you know, this, I think it could possibly be, you know, an alien. I don't know. I mean, I just call it how I see it. And if you go back one more, that's when mm -hmm. I zoomed in completely. Oh, there it is. So, yep. I mean, you can almost see on the right, like part of the eye, like wrapping around, you know? Right. Like, so this uh, is one of many uh, faces of beings I've got in this video. Uh, actually, somebody else found this for me. I didn't even know this was in the video until a month and a half ago. When I, I gave somebody the video, they made me a little edited, you know, video showing clips. And this the, the one clip was one he took. And I said, what the heck is that at the bottom of that beam of light? And it just blew me away. That's another example of someone else looking at my footage that I combed through and finding stuff that I never saw. I mean, that, that picture is pretty interesting, man. The, the, you know, right. it's just... Dude, sometimes I think like if someone showed me this picture, I'm not even sure if I would believe in myself, man. I can't even lie, you know. Oh, at least believe what I think it is. I uh, it's just so it's like ridiculous. Like people don't take pictures of stuff like this usually, but you know, I mean, it could be nothing too. But if you look at that picture, you can put two and two together and at least see what what I what I see, right? Know? I don't, I don't expect people to believe every, every theory I have on each, you know, picture. But as long as people can at least see what I see, I, I'm happy with that. They don't have to agree what I see. As long, at least I can get people to see, like, you know. So. Well, scientifically, it's a very interesting question. You know, when you, it's a very interesting way of looking at these pictures because as a scientist. You know, as a scientist, I could definitely appreciate the value of the photographs. You know, I definitely see the faces that you talk about. They're there. Um, and so in, in that regard, they definitely have value. I mean, they're interesting to look at. When you put them together with your story, it adds more value to them. They definitely have uh, artistic and entertainment value to them. Um, like I said, they, at this point, you know, they don't have scientific value because you're, you need those two things. That doesn't mean you can't get scientific value. I think, you know, having worked a little bit with a scientific experiment, you know, a lot of times it's not the easiest thing to get scientific data, you know. Um, no, not at all. Yeah. But that, 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 that makes, that's why it's so valuable. You know, that's why diamonds are valuable. That's why gold is valuable because it's, it's not easy to get it. Um, but yeah, but these, like I said, as a scientist, the, the, these, these faces – these photographs of faces, like I said, uh, just to summarize again, they definitely have value in them. I could definitely see the faces. I see the entertainment value and the artistic value combined with the story. In order to get a scientific value, you would have to get the repeatability. So you would have to consistently get the faces, uh, the same faces. And um, you would have to get falsifiability. So you would have to be able to run some experiments on the orbs, which contain the faces, to show that they are not just caused by something like dust. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's your choice. If you want to do that, you know, it's your choice. But, um, yeah, that's basically it. It's frustrating trying to prove stuff that doesn't doesn't even want to be visible or known, you know? But, like, <laughs> it's like they give me, like, an, I feel like all this stuff, they give me, like, just enough information to to know what's going on, but not too much, you know, know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, they, that they, picture is crazy to me, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of all these pictures are crazy to me. So uh, here's... this, there should be a zoomed in one after this. But this is okay. a screenshot of me doing a show on my channel, and uh, what appears to be a face in the sky. Now, this picture comes from the same video of the last picture, same video. Now, someone mentioned that this is probably a cloud and nothing else but 
that's a freaking face, man. And it's so bright that there's clouds in the background, but in the video, you'll see this. If it, it flashes in the middle of a sky ahead, uh, I think this is pretty clear. Yeah, I like this one. I like a lot of these look like uh, the hobgoblin from uh, yeah, man, from uh, and like Spider Man. <laughs> this is what kills me is like, why the hell is there a head in the middle of the sky on Christmas morning, right? And and why, how, like, the one time I put my camera outside, I get all this stuff. It's like I was almost like I don't want to say I was told because I didn't have that feeling. I just woke up that morning and said, you know what? I want to take my camera outside. But I captured a lot of stuff in that 30 minutes that was recording. And I've only recorded twice outside the whole time. Gotcha. Very cool. Very cool. Here's another so one. This, this one is here. also from the same video, as you okay. can see. Uh, I thought this was a cool picture just because of the light spiraling down. I do like that. I don't one. know what that stuff is. Here's something. Uh, this is a picture that really has to get zoomed in. Uh, I think I there's, share there's later. A zoom. Or, there's there's a zoom right there. This is a different one, but it's okay. Oh. But so, if you see these two parallel lines in the video, there's these. It looked like almost like lightning. There is actually flashes of light, and in between these lights, in this one picture here, it looks to me like a head. On the towards the top, it's, it's very mm. <laughs> paradoia ish, but I have a few pictures like this. I can make out eyes and a head of a gray, like I can to me, I see it clear. Um, you know, others might not see it that way, but what's compelling is I have a few more pictures, like the picture previous to this. Yeah, there's actually two faces in. It's hard to see it right here, but uh, you know, if anybody wants this picture, they can look. The picture on the bottom is a legit human face, and there's a there's a like a head above it that's a little distorted, but it looks like the same face in the other picture after this. Same thing in between these two lights, and these lights are coming down like in the homes, like across the street. It's a wild video. You know, I suggest uh. But people check that video out for sure. I think it's labeled like Christmas video, Xmas video. Um, the last third of the video looks like a freaking galactic war in the sky. It's it's, it's unbelievable. Um, that's okay. the probably the wildest video. Uh, that's okay. there's so much stuff going on. Yeah. Well, I think that's all the photos I have. I don't know if I missed any, but I, I tried to get all of them in there that you sent me. Um, so that was all the photos, yeah. Okay, cool. You know, well, in, cool. in between, in between all of that, you know, there was videos of shadow people I captured as well. Uh, another video I would suggest to check out is a video of what I think looks like Men in Black right. looking into my. Did you ever see that video? Did I share that with you? Uh, I haven't seen it yet. No, uh, I have the link because you sent me the link, but I, unfortunately, I can't play video. I don't think um, yeah. I tried playing video; it just lags too bad. <laughs> For anyone who's going to check it out, I just want to explain what's going on in the video real quick. Um, I'm asleep on my couch. My camera is pointed towards the window. My window's open. Uh, the screen's down. TV's on. I'm just sleeping on the couch. Now I see a face appear in the window. A white face like prominent jaw and it has like a, a long straight mouth and it has black glasses and like a fedora hat now it's looking in the window and then it like disappears right then it comes back again and you can literally see like the face just change like morph on camera to like something else and then a car drove by and it disappeared and then it came up again I, I can't even say the face is human, man. Like it looked, it was, you guys can see it. It's messed up video. So anyway. Well, that's a good, that's a good <laughs> advertisement for, for checking out your channel. Cause I want to so see that. Too, so. <laughs> it has a hat, a fedora hat, right? And you'll see a light start on the brim of his hat. And the light goes around the whole brim like this. And then he disappears behind him. After he disappears is a black car with a guy in a trench coat and a hat lighting up a cigarette and smoking a cigarette. So I asked my landlord for his security video because he has a camera above my window. 
he gave it to me. I looked through that thing <laughs> for hours, man. There was nothing. I even matched the timestamps and everything. He has nothing on camera. Um, so I go outside because I want to try to get an idea how, how tall this thing was. And uh, the top of my head was like a foot lower than the sill of my window. So I'm like 5'10". He would have probably had to have been two feet taller um, yeah. to be looking in my window, if not more. And the thing is, like, you never see him, like, step up on something. It's, it just appears and disappears. And the, I have the video up, and there's a video where I, I zoomed in and kind of did, like, a 360 of the video. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you guys can see for yourself. That that was around the time my, my uh, laptop started getting hacked. My phone was getting hacked. I was – I was – uh just files would just go missing uh, almost on a daily basis. I'll look at my phone in the corner of my eye and, and see my screen scrolling. And this all kind of happened at the same time. I was never a believer in the men in black, but, uh, you know, you let me know what you think after you watch it. Cause I think that video is, uh, could yeah. be something, uh, it sounds wild. Like I said, man, that's, that's, down. That's a perfect reason for someone to go to your channel because that sounds wild. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna see it for sure. Yeah. Well, that's crazy, man. Um, well, damn, we've been going for uh, we're about to hit three hours, but it, it really did fly by. Thank you for everybody being yeah. in the room. I yeah, think are we are we? Oh, go ahead. I said it was nice to actually sit down and actually go through kind of all the events, but most of the events in a row because a lot of times people might only see a couple orb videos in one picture or only hear about one, you know one uh experience but i think when you put it all together it's you know it's definitely something there no oh, yeah there's definitely something there it's just yeah, like, i'm still having experiences to this day you know still right. waking up with marks on me to this day same uh i spoke up with marks on me last month and then i did in march like there's bruising involved there was uh you know and then over here is like something's been jumping on me while I'm sleeping. Oh. And the reason I know this is because, you know, first of all, I can feel it happening, but I've been uh, sleeping on an air mattress temporarily and it had like a small leak. So sometimes at night it would kind of deflate. So yeah. when I, I felt the weight on top of me, the sides of the air mattress is kind of folded up when it jumped on me. Like I felt something on my legs, like grabbing me. And uh, I woke up and I just saw like a round cloud of smoke. And that happened a couple of times here. So, and the shadow people are everywhere. <laughs> they're, they're like so normal. It's like, I mean, I literally see them multiple ones, like will peek in my room with the, my door open. If I'm playing Xbox, I'll see them one at a time, different heights and everything. It's, it's, it's normal, man. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, I appreciate you letting me come on and share all this stuff. Yeah, thank you, man. Like I said, I'm, I'm always here to talk to you uh, if you want to share your information. Uh, with uh, It's definitely an interesting story. I, I think people that listen to your story, uh, you know, they'll definitely be entertained. I'm, I don't say that as a bad thing. I mean, why do people watch YouTube? They watch it to be entertained. I mean, uh, so it's a good story. And it's um, I think some people could also relate to it. I think maybe some people could feel like they're not so alone. Um, yeah, that's a that's a big positive about doing stuff like this because you know once in a while i'll get a random dm and someone saying wow you know what what you said happened to me or what you said you know or you, you helped me put some of the pieces of the puzzle together of my experiences you know stuff like that that, that stuff's cool you know yeah well, I also I want to thank everybody who is in the room and who was in the room. So Nina Williams is here. Uh, Betty is here. Betty, uh, get John to go get a general exam. He needs to just get a general physical, some blood work. Just because we want him to live a long and healthy mm -hmm. life, we don't want him to have any medical problems on his journey. Uh, Scotty, thank you for being here. Nancy, if you're if you're watching this tomorrow, uh, hello <laughs> from the past. Mr. Crowley, <laughs> thank you for all your feedback. Uh, Iowa Walks, thank you. Iowa Walks has been on every episode of this show, uh, Science is awesome. Strange, since I started. So thank you, Iowa Walks. Please subscribe to Iowa Walks' channel. Please subscribe to uh, Wreaking Havoc's channel. 
who else was in here? Uh, we got lots of people. I think I said Scotty already. Thank you again, Scotty. Uh, once again, Betty, get this guy to go get a general exam. And um, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just run a commercial real fast. Check out We Can Havoc, We Can 216, no, 215. Yeah. 215. And then uh, also, if you go to this link right here, uh, it takes you to a website called Mercari. Mercari is like eBay. Have you heard of Mercari before, John? I've used it. Yeah, it's a cool site. Yeah. It's a cool yeah. site. You could uh, buy anything. You could send people offers if you want to get something for less. You could buy books, video games, camping equipment, anything really. Uh, infrared cameras. And um, yeah, so if you sign up with this link, you'll get $10 off your first purchase. So that's free money. It doesn't cost you anything. I'll get something too. And then if you use that link, if you sell your first $100 of selling something, you know, just clean out your gar garage, you'll get $30 extra. So that's a great way to support the channel is uh, go to this link. And yeah, other than that, uh, John, thank you for being here. I'm, I'm so glad we're friends. Get it, please get a physical exam. <laughs> Just get a regular physical exam. Only for your health. I'm only saying it because yeah. I don't want you to have to take any weird medicine in the future. I don't want you to have to go to the emergency room. None of that's going to happen. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm yeah. saying go to the doctor, get a general exam. Is there anything else you want to share with the, with the audience before we sign out for tonight? Uh. Yeah, I would say, you know, everything I told you guys today up to this point, you know, it's been a, a wild journey, but I believe I'm in the beginning <laughs> still of a journey. I, I feel I feel like I'm in the beginning stage still. There's a lot. Cause this, this stuff doesn't stop. It doesn't let up. So and it keeps hey, getting you, more intense. So there's, you, there, I feel like there's an end game at some point. Have you thought about like writing a book or something? Because like I said, like the faces, like I said, there's definitely entertainment value in that, you know. Have you thought about like writing a book? Because I think that'd be just cool to look at through all the uh, the faces and everything. And I then have. Go with your story, yeah. I have thought about it because I feel like uh, I can go into great detail, you know, way more than I did on here, like on every incident. And I think I could fill up a book to this point. Cool. You know, I, I thought about it. Yeah, because you, you got a story, you got pictures, you got everything. But, yeah. but there's no ending yet. It's still like, you know, <laughs> the journey is still like in the process. So that's that's why you write part one and then part two comes out later. <laughs> that's true. That's a good idea. All right. Well, uh, okay. I guess with that, well, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here, John. Thank you for everybody in the room. Thank you, everybody who's watching this in the future. Like I said, uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you don't like the show, just put it in the comments. If you don't like the way I look, put it in the yeah. comments. I think it helps. I, uh, I have no problem with, uh, you know, I don't want to say negative comments, but I guess non-believers, you know. Sure. I, I was just on a show uh, a couple of days ago, True Seekers. We did a little interview. Yeah. And, you know, some people I saw in the comments like, this guy doesn't seem too smart. He'll know what he's talking about. <laughs> it's just dust. I don't know what's wrong with this guy. You're wasting everybody's time recording dust. Like, this guy's an idiot. I get it because these guys only seen, you know, a fraction of what I have. You know, like, I understand if I show somebody one orb video and talk about a couple experiences, they're going to assume it's dust. You know, why wouldn't they? But I, I'm glad I had the opportunity today to go over a majority of this stuff. As it makes everything more compelling to the viewer when it's in one package. So they get the whole story. So, but yeah. Scotty B says, uh, good job, John and Wild Trees. Thank you, Scotty, Thanks, B. Scotty B. Good job being a guest. You were a great guest. Uh, Scotty B, a guest in the chat room. Uh, and then Scotty B also says, uh, get x-rays, John. So, yeah, get some x-rays. That's part of the physical, buddy. Uh, trolls are asses. Yeah, they are. But they, I like trolls, actually. They make me laugh. This one guy, I did this I did this uh, episode on uh, abductions like uh, a week ago, and I posted it, and somebody, their comment was like, this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Yeah. He's so ignorant. He loves the sound of his own voice. He keeps visiting with his hat. It shows how nervous he is. And it didn't upset me. I, I put, I just, I wrote back. I was like, LOL, thanks for the review. And then he wrote back, uh, he, he or she was like, I call it how I see it. And I just wrote back, very cool, very cool, very cool. Yeah. I, I had one video where I, I kept looking to the side because I kept seeing something in my kitchen. Yeah. And then someone wrote, oh, this guy's a liar. He can't look at the camera. 
He keeps looking away when he talks. That's how you know he's lying. I'm like, no, I'm paranoid because I keep seeing this black figure walk around my kitchen. I keep looking over, you know. And so I've, I've heard it all, man. I've heard everything. And, you know, honestly, in the beginning, it did bother me because I didn't understand. I was never into social media. I didn't understand the troll aspect, especially okay. ufology. I thought it was kumbaya. Everybody's wants the same oh. goal. We're all working together. You Hell know? no. That's like the opposite. I was, of the dude, <laughs> yeah. When I found out it was like the opposite, it was, it was a shock, dude. I was like, I felt disappointed and like let down. Like, yeah, you know, cause some of us, there's a lot of people that don't share their stories that have way more incredible stories than I shared that I've heard. And they just, they don't want to be ridiculed. They don't want to put themselves out there, you know? Because yeah. at the end of the day, like, where else can I really talk about this stuff? I have no option but to dabble in this YouTube ufology space, you know? So it's like, it is what it is. But I just think it's weird for, like, a subject like this, why there's so many doubters and trolls and haters that follow. Like, if you don't if you don't believe this stuff, why are you even here, <laughs> you know? Or at least, at the, at the least, be open-minded instead right. of calling me, like, a straight-up idiot, but... Yeah, I, 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 I don't really, I don't get a, fr- I don't get upset by trolls anymore. Because when I was in graduate school, getting my master's degree, like, I don't know, it was like boot camp. Like every professor was just like talking shit to me. I, I don't know if I think that's part of the the training. You know, like you're a student and every idea you have is bullshit, and you have to prove it. So anyway, I got so used to it. I mean, it's just normal for me for someone to be like, if someone talks bad about me, I'm like, oh yeah, that's normal. Uh, that's good though. I mean, I don't. It's good. I, I have tough skin now. Um, Betty says, yeah, I'm so um, happy. I'm so happy you're still seeking answers and sharing your experiences, John. And as Scotty says, LMAO. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, LMAO, I, indeed. I, and, you know, not, another thing that bothers me is when uh, I'm totally down with people's opinions. But I hate when people are like, that is dust. End of story. I'm not listening to anything else you have to say anymore. No, that's the stuff that like I don't understand. Like, right. Yeah. If, it's different when someone says, you know, I think I think we have dust in your apartment, or someone says you're an idiot, that's dust in your apartment. It's two completely different answers, you know. I just right. don't I don't know, I don't understand the whole troll thing. I mean, I've I've typed plenty of nasty messages on YouTube. But nine times out of ten, I delete it after I type it because I just realize it's ridiculous. Like it's just not me to like. I don't even you know. know. Some, yeah, I don't know these people. Like I'm arguing with somebody I don't know, or it's like yeah, I almost like vent just typing it out. Then I just delete it and I just you know. But now it doesn't bother me. Just, I know it's part of it. ufology is a toxic environment in general. So yeah, well, ufology is part of the paranormal, and you know what else is also paranormal? Trolls, baby. Trolls are paranormal, so it makes sense. We have trolls. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Longest yeah. goodbye ever. But yeah, thank you, John. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, people from the future. Thank you for being here as well. Uh, good night, everybody. Thank yep. you, John. And hit the button. Goodbye.